game is brought to you by Coors and Coors Light. The beers with a difference worth tasting. Coors to you, Bulldogs. And by Toyota and your Central Valley Toyota dealers. Toyota value and Toyota reliability. Who could ask for anything more? And by your Coca-Cola bottler who brings you the smooth, refreshing taste of Coke. Catch the wave. Coke. And by Fresno's Bank for business and personal accounts. Fresno Bank of Commerce. It's a beautiful night for college football here in the San Joaquin Valley. The temperature in the mid to upper 60s. All in all, a great night for New Mexico State versus Fresno State. Hello, everybody. Welcome to tonight's football telecast. The question everybody has been asking this past week, how will that stunning loss at San Jose State last week affect Fresno State? After all, it's rare for the Bulldogs to lose a football game, certainly in the last two years. How will Fresno State react tonight? Well, they'll be meeting a New Mexico State Aggie team that has a lot of problems. The Aggies have lost four in a row, and in those four consecutive defeats, opponents have averaged 43 points against them. Now for some observations on tonight's game, our colleague on the telecast, Don Perkins, formerly of the Dallas Cowboys. Thank you very much, Mike. And the question, I think, can be answered because the Bulldogs will come back. They'll come back with a vengeance. Mike, I think this will be a night when you don't take any prisoners. There's a lot of super talent on the Bulldog team. They know they should have won last week. They had two touchdowns scored against them in the last minute and 10 seconds. Those, two sec uh, those last two touchdowns knocked them out of the top 20, and they like that ranking. So I would not want to be on the Aggie football club tonight. Uh, the Bulldogs will be here to play for Keats. Now for another observation, our field reporter, Vic Jacobs. Thank you, Mike and Don. One factor on the Fresno State defense, their whole secondary is banged up from that San Jose disaster last weekend, starting at secondary. In safeties, Tony Harris and Eddie Bustamante at cornerback will be Thomas Ireland joining Greg Williamson, the only returning starter. And even Greg is banged up, but he'll be anchoring the, the backfield. But Vic predicts in a big way, Fresno State 76-6 to tonight. Back to you guys in the booth. Woo. There is the internal optimist right there, I mean to tell you. Well, you've heard our comments. What about the two coaches? What do they have to say about the game? You'll find out when we return to Bulldog Stadium here in Fresno, California. A lot of breweries use ordinary tap water to make their beer. Not coarse. Pure? Natural. Yeah. Coors is the one. Your Toyota dealers present the hard facts. Fact. They've got the standard beds with more payload, higher towing capacity, and better MPG than Nissan's hard bodies. Fact. They've got the 4x4s with a longer cruising range than Nissan's. Fact. They've got the best selection of compacts in the business, a great supply, and the deals to make them fly. Want a hard body? Do push-ups. Want a tough truck? Get the hard facts. The number one selling compact truck. Only at your Toyota dealer. From a sea of choices rises a new wave of taste so refreshing nothing else comes close. Catch the wave. Coke. What's it going to take to win this game tonight? Well, naturally, the key would be the quarterbacks. Kevin Sweeney of Fresno State, Jim Miller of New Mexico State. And those two names are uppermost on the pregame comments of the two opposing coaches. First, Mike Knoll of New Mexico State, followed by Fresno State's Jim Sweeney. 
and we have to do a good job of uh, creating some good situations with our defense for our offense. Uh, we have to have a, a positive turnover ratio, which even in our victory over Fulton, we did not achieve. This is some things that we talk to our football team every day about, and we haven't achieved yet. And we need to be more consistent with our offense. Uh, I have great respect for Fresno's defense, the Grayson kid, the Hanneman kid, uh, uh, O'Leary. They have some great players, and uh, they run a good scheme, and it's, it's going to be a great challenge and opportunity for our football team. We have to contain Miller and the backup quarterback because both of them are excellent athletes, throw well on the run. Miller was probably the most highly recruited athlete in the state of New Mexico in 10 years. He's going to be the biggest problem. Throws the ball well, throws the ball from drop back. When he drops back, he's very much a dangerous runner. He's the guy that's the biggest problem. The comments of Fresno State's Jim Sweeney and prior to that, Mike Knoll of New Mexico State. Well, so much for the words. Let's get right to the action. We'll be back with the kickoff. New Mexico State versus Fresno State right after. There's a new dimension in family hair care with Saturdays, formerly Fantastic Sam's. Saturdays looks great from every angle, every day of the week. You don't need an appointment for the high-quality, affordable service we know you want in family hair care. Our skilled professionals will give you great perms, cuts, style. And now there's a sunny new look and feel at Saturdays, a special spirit. Saturdays Family Hair Care, a family favorite every day of the week. Get the Saturdays spirit at these former Fantastic Sam's locations. Clovis Honda has moved to what is probably the largest motorcycle and Honda product outlet in the valley and features total service from a vast parts inventory to a factory trained service team. One of the many specials of the new Clovis Honda is this EM650 portable generator with a four stroke engine, exclusive oil alert system and fuel capacity for up to five hours of continuous operation. Yours right now for only $297. Don't miss all the specials right now at the new Clovis Honda, 727 Clovis Avenue near downtown Clovis. These days, to keep your lawn and yard looking good, an automatic sprinkler system isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. And all you need is a short weekend to assemble and install a sprinkler or drip system designed free by O'Neill Irrigation. Just bring in your yard measurements to our experts. They'll design your landscape and new sprinkler system. With the purchase of a system, we provide all the drawings, instructions, and parts you'll need to do it right the first time. We'll even recommend a trenching service. O'Neill Irrigation. Free design, free delivery, and number one for low prices. O'Neill Irrigation on Sierra, just east of Blackstone. Now that I'm 60, I'm going to relax and enjoy my Prime. Like the extra interest I'm earning on my Prime Plus CD at Valley Federal Savings. Yes, sir, an extra half percent interest just for savers 60 and older. And Valley Federal's the only place that pays the Prime Plus bonus on top of their normal high rate. Meantime, I've got personal business to attend to, and I'm chairman of the board. The Prime Plus CD and the Prime Plus bonus, only at Valley Federal Savings. Jim Gill, a barefooted place kicker, will kick off for the Aggies as the Bulldogs have won the toss. And there is Gill ready to kick off to either Keith McCoy or Brock Smith. It will be McCoy at the four. McCoy to the 20. McCoy tried to get to the outside and is bumped hard and dropped by Norman Whitehead. A return up to the 23 by Keith McCoy. And the Bulldogs will have a first down from their own 23. And of course, leading the way for Fresno State, Kevin Sweeney. He has passed for 9,532 career yards, number five in his quest of Doug Flutie's all-time NCAA record. So far this season, Sweeney has completed 58% of his passes. Right away, it's Williams into the middle for a couple to the 25. James Williams, the senior from Brunswick, Georgia. And twice this season, Williams has rushed for over 100 yards. So Mosley and Williams will be the running backs. And the wide receivers, Stephen Baker, Gene Taylor, and Paul Flug. Flug the tight end. With a come, Chulanza, Holland, Cortese, and Truchel, the offensive line. And they'll try to give Kevin Sweeney a little more protection than he got in the first half at San Jose. Sweeney has time to set up and go long and deep for Stephen Baker. Baker, oh, has the ball for a brief second at the 25 and couldn't hold on. One reason why, he was shadowed by Lloyd Bradley, and it was Bradley and Baker going for that 60-yard toss from Kevin Sweeney. Baker, the guy with the lightning quick feet, he's averaging 32 yards a catch on this one. Good pass protection that time for Sweeney. 
But Lloyd Bradley does a jo good job. Stayed right with Baker all the way. The Bulldogs playing in front of another sellout house here at Bulldog Stadium. The eighth consecutive sellout for Fresno State football. Sweeney on third and long. Sets up, goes across the middle, and it's dropped by Mosley. Mosley had the ball around the shoulder pads around the 28, and Steve Markey, the defensive tackle, was putting the pressure on Sweeney. There's the defensive front four of New Mexico State, the linebackers, and keep your eye, feel on number 48, Bobby Kinder. He is an outstanding linebacker. Dave Bass in punt formation for Fresno State. Rossi Humphrey is deep. The punt by Bass is taken at the 42-yard line. Grab was made there by Ed Russell, and it'll be a first down for New Mexico State at the 42, following the 35-yard punt by Bass. Last week, Jim Miller had his problems, as you can see by the graphic there. Only three out of 16, just 16 yards passing as Utah State mauled the Aggies up in Logan, Utah, 42 to nine. So Miller is a much better passer than last week's stats would indicate. Miller throws on the run and it is incomplete. Going to Keith Lott, a tailback coming out of the backfield. And John O'Leary, a linebacker covering on the play. There's a look at the backs and receivers in the lineup. You're going to see Miller rolling out an awful lot. He carries the ball an awful lot for a quarterback. He's run the ball 88 times this year for 343 yards. So uh, he'll be running almost as much as he throws the ball. New Mexico State coach Mike Knoll has made a lot of changes in the lineup. Four starters from last week's game not are in the lineup tonight. They didn't even make the trip. And that's one of the reasons why the offensive line breaking down is... Miller was rolling out to his left and stacked up by John O'Leary and Jethro Franklin. A loss all the way back to the 37. Loss of about five. Ramsey Olsen and Franklin will head up the defense of Fresno State. The linebackers, Jay Wilkerson, he's in there replacing Grayson, who's out with a bad shoulder. O'Leary Nunn and Hanneman, the other linebackers. And a revamped secondary, Williamson, Bustamante, Ireland, and Harris. Miller rolling out to his right, and he completes the pass at the 46. The grab is made by Benny Thomas, and that'll be a first down for New Mexico State. Eddie Bustamante, who was filling in for the injured Michael Stewart, and by the way, Stewart is in uniform tonight, might play, but it is extremely doubtful. Looking at it from the ground level, we're going to see Benny Thomas come out. He's the wide receiver who's a junior. He was a walk-on, but he's now the leading receiver for the, for the New Mexico State Aggies. The ball is at the 46 of Fresno State, a first down for New Mexico State. Ramsey a little bit anxious there. Defensive left in. The give is to Keith Lott. Lott is stacked up at the 46, the line of scrimmage. On the bottom of the pile is Cliff Hanneman there and Craig Atade. There'll be no gain on that play. It's been tough for New Mexico State to get any sort of a ground game going this season. That's one of the reasons they are one and five. Second down and about 10. The ball just outside the 45. Split backs for Miller who wants to go to the air again. Here comes Ramsey after him. He gets away from Ramsey and then he's stacked up back at the 49 of New Mexico State. Wilkerson is in there and so is Craig Atade. So Jay Wilkerson and Atade collaborated on that tackle back at the 49. A lot of pressure put on that time by Greg Ramsey. Actually, going into last game, they were leading the nation in scoring defense, averaging about four points per game. But that 45 points scored against them last week changed all of that. Running backs are Anthony Singleton and Keith Lott for quarterback Jim Miller. Miller rolling out to his left, trying to get some protection and can't complete the pass. He was throwing to Benny Thomas, his flanker back. And on fourth down, it'll be a punting situation for the Aggies. Good pressure on Miller that time from the rover back, James Rivera. The punter for New Mexico State is Gary Aldez, a 5'11 sophomore. He's averaging just about 37 yards a punt. And the ball is taken there at the 15 by Stephen Baker. 
And Baker, who excels in punt returns, didn't get much that time as he's brought down at the 20. The tackle made by Steve Markey. So the Bulldogs with a first down from their 20. It's going to be interesting now to see what they do. They had to punt on the first series of downs. I know the Bulldogs are still smarting over last week's performance, especially in the first quarter when they had all kinds of problems moving the ball offensively. Gene Taylor comes out wide to the left side, and Stephen Baker is to the right. Play action fake. Sweeney wants to go long if he can, and he completes it at about the 35. The pass completed over there at the 35-yard line to the tight end, Paul Flug, and Sam Dickey made the tackle. It is rare that Flug catches the pass. He's Generally. only caught three passes, Mike, all year long, but Coach Jim Sweeney says he's the best uh, blocking tight end in the conference, but this is his fourth pass reception for the year. The ball is at the 32-yard line of Fresno State. We have no score, and we've played almost four minutes of the first quarter. This is Williams. Williams is to the 40 and is rolled down near the 40-yard line. Bobby Kinder, the middle linebacker, who has certainly been a bright spot in an otherwise bleak picture for New Mexico State on the tackle. And you see what Williams has done for the year. Last week he ran for 141 yards. He's got four ribs tonight, but he's playing and playing well. Coach Jim Sweeney said he never saw him run better than he did last week. And Williams got a good block from Mike Chulansif, the left guard. Ball is at the 40, second down and two for Kevin Sweeney and the Bulldogs. Sweeney on the inside handoff, shovels it off to Mosley. And Mosley gets across the 50 to the 48 into New Mexico State territory, and he is able to pick up a first down. It took the free safety, Dave Ryder, with some help from the strong safety, Ed Russell, to bring him down. Nice run that time by Mosley. Coach Jim Sweeney said he may be the best all around. There you see the little shovel pass to number 37, Mosley. Coach Jim Sweeney says he may be the best all around back he's got. He can play both tailback and fullback. Jim Sweeney now ranks number four in the NCAA all-time stats. He just went ahead of Jim McMahon. And that time he overthrows Stephen Baker and Ron Jenkins down there. It was, it was James Williams, the wide receiver. And that'll bring the ball back to the line of scrimmage, the 48, and it'll be third down and uh, second. It'll be second and 10 at the 48. Freshman James Williams seeing a lot of action tonight for Stephen Baker, both on punt returns and as a receiver. And I think uh, Baker may have a little ding from last week's loss up there in San Jose. A lot of the Fresno players have some things. There's the inside handoff again, loose ball, and they rule it an incompleted pass. He was throwing the ball forward, even though he was throwing it underhanded. It's still an incompleted pass as he was trying to hit the inside pitch to Anthony Mosley. And so far, it would appear, Don Perkins, that the Bulldogs are still feeling the effects of that 45-41 loss at Cer San Jose State. Certainly are. They're sputtering here. Of course, we're early in the first quarter. They'll get things worked out. No score. Fresno State and New Mexico State. Brock Smith and Gene Taylor are the wide receivers. Smith to the left side. Kevin Sweeney sets up, and that's just as the arm was caught forward and moving forward, he was hit and lost the ball, an incomplete forward pass. It was Mike Williams, the defensive end of New Mexico State, who got in there on Kevin. On fourth down now, it'll be Barry Belli to punt. Now, the first time the Bulldogs punted, it was David Bass, but Belli had an excellent punting day against the Spartans a week ago. And Belli, the place kicker, boots a high spiral punt, fair catch signal for by Rossi Humphrey, fumbles the ball at the 15, but he was able to pounce on it. Once you touch that ball, even though you've signaled for a fair catch, you've got to bring it in. That's one of those occasions when the Bulldogs were just not really that alert because they kind of gave up and let it go for granted that Rossi would make, Rossi Humphrey would make the catch, which he did not. And had one of the Bulldogs been right in the area, they could have fallen on that. For New Mexico State, the center is Roger Turner. He's one of three captains tonight for the Aggies. The others, Joe Campbell and Daryl Ford. The guards, Andy Miller and John Dickens, and the tackles, Jim Matthews and John Roberts. To reiterate what I said earlier, four starters against Utah State a week ago not only are not in the starting lineup tonight, they didn't even make the trip. 
BCAA rules allow a visiting team on the road to suit up 50 players. Mike Newell brought only 44. So he's really shaken things up this week in practice. Pat Brown gets his first call of the night, and Brown moves up close to the 17-yard line, tackled there by Anthony Nunn. Second down and eight. It's unusual for a coach to, when he can bring 50, to bring only 44, Don. Coach Mike, uh, Mike Noel is still looking for a starting 11. He's got some players that didn't even make the team that were stars and starters last year. Thomas is in the slot to the left. Miller rolling out to the left, looking for Thomas. He's going to have to hurry. Miller runs to the 25, to the 35, and is brought down there. Anthony Nunn, the linebacker, caught up with quarterback Jim Miller. And when you think of Miller's stats, he is passing at a 42% clip, but he has rushed the ball very well, too. It's not really a knock on uh, quarterback Jimmy Miller, but I really think his forte is as a runner. He's got a lot of problems trying to throw the ball because he doesn't get much time, but he's an excellent runner when he scrambles. He was the number one prep player in the state of New Mexico three years ago, picking up 17 on that ramble. On a first down from the 35, the protection breaks down, and Miller goes down. Miller brought down by Craig Attey. Attey, a 6'3", 230-pound junior from Carmel, California. Attey was a redshirt last year, and he also had one year at Monterey Peninsula Junior College before coming to Fresno. So that'll be a loss back to the 28, a loss of seven. It's second and 17 for the Aggies of New Mexico State. We're almost midway through the first quarter. No score. Mike Walden and Don Perkins with you from Bulldog Stadium. Two receivers wide to the left side. Miller looking to the left. Now goes back to the right and completes the pass at about the 36. Anthony Nunn running him out of bounds. The pass completed to Pat Brown. Brown, a junior from Pacifica, California. A lot of California players on this New Mexico State team. Awful lot of California players, and uh, they're going to come through. They've got a lot of young players on this ball club, and, of course, their 34-year-old head coach, Mike Knowles, in his first year, he's still trying to feel around and find out who his top 11, offensively and defensively, will be. Gene Egan is wide to the left side. As one receiver, Humphrey is wide to the other side. Must have been a mix-up in the backfield there as a fumble recovered by Fresno State. I'll say there was a mix-up. Jeff Rowe Franklin comes up with the ball for Fresno State. A mix-up in the snap from the center. Uh, Ross, uh, Roger Turner and the quarterback, Jim Miller, and Jeff Rowe Franklin says, hey, the ball is there, I'll take it. And we'll take a commercial break here with eight minutes left in the first quarter. No score. Who's gonna be at the Silver Bullet tonight? Blue 2 Coors Light Draft. Coming up. You know, you got a great thing going here, big guy. But I think it's about time we get a bouncer. Bouncer? Why do we need a bouncer? Well, to handle some big, masculine, rowdy type who's trying to take advantage of my naive and delicate nature. Who's doing that, Fran? Well, nobody yet. <laughs> but you never know. There's no slowing down for the Silver Bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. Everybody wants a trouble-free car, but these trouble spots can affect your vehicle and the cost to maintain it. Toyota owners tell a different story. Every year, the leading consumer magazine compares vehicle repairs from almost half a million owners. Once again, owners of Toyota, cars, trucks, and vans reported the fewest repairs, making them the most trouble-free. Better than Nissan, Honda, Chevy. Get more trouble-free driving at your Toyota dealer now. Who can ask for anything more? A lot of things contribute to a team with a 1-5 and five record. They're losing ways. And certainly, turnovers have really hampered this New Mexico State Aggie team. They're averaging four turnovers per game. Now, that shows up in the stats. What doesn't show up, the mental mistakes that lead to breakdowns. Baker and Taylor, the wide receivers on separate sides. The pitch to Williams. James Williams cuts in at the 30. Williams to the outside, got a first down, and Williams is finally put down near the 22. A nice run by senior James Williams. Bobby Kinder, the middle linebacker, drifted over there and stayed with Williams, but Williams was able to pick up the first down before Bobby Kinder could get him down. 
not running like a man that's got sore ribs or a sore anything. Ran for 1,017 yards last year. And a good block from Jeff Skidmore freeing Williams on that romp. First down at the New Mexico State 23. Kevin Sweeney is back and fires the pass. Knocked away from Taylor. Good play by Craig Thompson, the defensive cornerback. Thompson timed it perfectly, stepped right in front of Taylor to swat it away. And when you're playing against a man like uh, Gene Taylor, you've got to give him a lot of room because Taylor has excellent speed. There's the throw by Sweeney. We're going to see Taylor go for the ball, but a great defensive job by Craig Thompson. Kevin Sweeney is only one out of seven so far in the game against San Jose State last week. One out of nine. Then he really caught on and had something like ten out of his next eleven complete. Sweeney in heavy trouble trying to get rid of the ball. And right there on top of Sweeney was Mike Williams. And it looks like Sweeney is hurt. He took a blow right into the ribs, the midsection. As Mike Williams, a 240-pound junior from Houston, Texas, poured in on Kevin. One thing about Kevin Sweeney is his durability. He's only missed one quarter of a game in his college career. There is Williams and Sweeney getting rid of the ball. It's ruled an incomplete forward pass, but now the question is, how serious the injury to the Fresno State quarterback? Mikey kind of gets bent over backwards on that, like he rolled over Mike Williams' body in sort of an arch of the back that's quite unnatural, but uh, let's hope it's nothing more than that. Well, he's up. Well, Kevin's a tough kid. His most serious injury in athletics was in high school in baseball. Tell you what, after all those licks he took last week out, out on the sidelines, uh, he can withstand almost anything. There it is again, and there's the arch of the back that I thought may have been a big problem, but evidently it's not, and Kevin walked off under his own power. We've got a new quarterback, Eric Bouchel, a redshirt freshman from Fullerton, California. Bouchel has thrown only nine times in games that were long since decided, he's completed five. So Eric Bouchel takes over now on third and ten. Throws right away and going for Gene Taylor. Knocked away from Taylor in the end zone. Taylor was all ready to gather it in for six, and it was Craig Thompson that got his big hand in the way and slapped it from the grasp of Gene Taylor. And Jim Sweeney says, nice going, Eric. You came on there and threw one. That was a good pass. Excellent pass. You can't throw it any better than that. Just a great defensive play that time by Craig Thompson. Now it'll be fourth and ten. And we will get a field goal attempt. Ron Jenkins to hold. Barry Belli to kick. This would be a 40-yard field goal. And Jim Sweeney has said so often, with Belli out there to kick field goals, it's like money in the bank. But this time... The bank was closed. Most banks are closed on Saturday. Well, they're supposed to be or whatever. Barry Belli misses a 40-yard field goal, and we still have no score midway through the first quarter. Listen, if you're looking for a school to train you for a career in something you enjoy, I think you should choose carefully. Compare one school to another. Make a list. Then choose the school with over a 90-year success record. A school that requires only those classes necessary to your chosen skill. A school that placed over 96% of its last graduating class in jobs of their choice. You'll see, there's really no comparison. There's only Healed Four Seas College. The choice is yours. Can you believe the way some fast food places make chicken? It starts out frozen and can end up like rubber. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, the original recipe and extra crispy chicken start out fresh. And they're cooked fresh all day long, so every piece is tender and delicious. Finger licking good. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, all we do is chicken, so we do it right. Anyone else's chicken may leave you cold. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Everybody kind of holding their collective breath right here at Bulldog Stadium now, awaiting a report, and we will get an update on Kevin Sweeney's condition just as soon as we can. Line felt wide to the right, right side. He's a receiver. In the slot to the right is Rossi Humphrey. First and ten. Miller to set up and throw, and he's going to go long and deep to Humphrey, and they bump into one another. Humphrey colliding with Thomas Ireland. 
I think it was Humphrey running into Ireland more than the other way around. Looks like Humphrey runs right up the back of Thomas Ireland. No flag was thrown on it. Let's take a look at it again. They're both looking back for the ball, and as you said, uh, Mike Ruffy Humphrey was the one running on the heels of Ireland. You also talked about uh, people hurting, uh, New Mexico State hurting their own cause. I'll get back to this after this play, though. Paul Schroeder, a wide receiver, wide to the right side. Benny Thomas in the slot to the right. Miller on the rollout, completes it to Thomas. And he's pulled down at the 25 by Cliff Hanneman. Kevin Sweeney loosening up over the sidelines, so he's going to be back in there. That's uh, a good indication. He may be hurting, but he will be back. He looks pretty good. Last week when Utah State beat the Aggies 42-9, uh, the receiver handled the opening kickoff. That's a Benny Thomas mishandled the opening kickoff. It went out of bounds on the one. Two plays later, Miller was sacked for a safety. It went downhill from there on. On third and seven from the 26, Miller completes this win to Singleton coming out of the backfield. And Singleton stopped at the 31. Anthony Nunn made the tackle. Let's go down to Vic Jacobs and get an update on Kevin Sweeney. Okay, good news for Bulldog fans. No serious injury. The wind was just knocked out of Kevin. The wind was just knocked out of Kevin. Kevin Sweeney will be back on the next series, so no serious damage. Kevin Sweeney, number nine, will be back on the very next series. Here is the punt by Aldez. Stephen Baker back there, and boy, he has run down quickly. A nice play by Joe Campbell of New Mexico State. And obviously, Mike Knoll is determined, and he's drilled into his New Mexico State team all this week in practice. Do not let Baker get loose. Don't let him do his thing. And back into the fray for Fresno State, Kevin Sweeney. That was a 33-yard punt by Gary Aldez. And uh, minus six on the return by Baker. It may have been minus six on that one, but you've got to watch Baker all night long. He'll break one. Ball is at the 30. First and 10, Fresno State. Still no score with six minutes left in the first quarter. Sweeney puts it up there for Gene Taylor. And Taylor was bumped it around the 50-yard line by Craig Thompson, and it was like a pick in basketball. He couldn't get around Thompson. He could not. Thompson actually had him out of bounds, so had Baker uh, been able, or Taylor been able to come back and make the catch, looking at head coach Jim Sweeney there, it wouldn't have been any good because Taylor was out of bounds. I don't think Craig Thompson is the guy to pick on there. Hey, uh, Mike, what's that Sweeney's got around his waist? He's got some kind of support thing. We'll take a look at it later. It could be a flak jacket. A lot of quarterbacks use that. Or it just could be some heavy tape. Sure, we'll get a report soon on that. And off goes to James Williams. Penalty marker is dropped as Williams goes down near the 32. One thing I was just about to say is before the ball was snapped, we haven't had any penalties tonight in the game. And boom, just like that. We had 36 a week ago at San Jose State. That's a new NCAA record. Okay, here we're going to see who did what to who. Let's take a look at the top of the screen there, you see. Movement prematurely by the Aggies. Left in, coming across. Before, he's in the neutral zone before the ball snapped. The referee tonight is Bob Barrow of Salt Lake City. Bob, you're on. Offside on the defense. Still second. So the ball has moved up five yards. Bill Del Baggio is the umpire. Ken Rivera, Bill Levy, Larry Schneider, and Don Berberet, the other officials from the PCAA. Across the middle, it's intercepted. It is picked off by Bobby Kinder, the linebacker. And Kinder still on his feet, but his knee touched down, or he went out of bounds around the 29. I think his knee touched down first. Bobby Kinder, who had 17 tackles a couple of weeks ago against Arkansas. He is something. Doing what a linebacker should do, making the proper drop back there. Paul Fluke, the intended receiver right there. But Kinder goes right in front of him. Sweeney, I don't think, ever saw him at all. Nice tackle, though, by number 37, Mosley. Kinder is averaging 13 tackles per game. That's his second intercepted pass this season. He also has two fumble recoveries. I'll say he's a good one. Miller is able to complete this pass to Pat Brown, and Brown gets close to a first down at the 20-yard line. Brought down by Anthony Nunn and Thomas Ireland. And now New Mexico State on the drive as they have the ball down to the 20. It'll be second and one. So Jim Miller has much better stats 
<laughs> in the first uh, 10 minutes of action here tonight for Coach Mike Knoll of New Mexico State than he did a week ago when he was just three out of 16 for 16 yards. Leinfeldt wide to the right side along with Benny Thomas and Humphrey is wide to the left side. The give is to Roger Bocox and he goes to the 17. That'll be enough for a first down. Cliff Hanneman on the tackle. Bocox was the leading rusher for the Aggies in 84 but then he uh, got hurt after the fourth game sat out the rest of the season. He's making a comeback this year. Roger Bocox. 6'1", 230 from Perryton, Texas. They also have a running back, the Aggies do, with the name of Bobby Cox. Wouldn't it be great to have Cox and Bo Cox in the same backfield together? We don't need that aggravation, Mike. Split backs now for Miller. Bo Cox and Pat Brown. Miller wants to throw, and he's blocked out by Jay Wilkerson. Nice grab by Wilkerson, who is filling in for David Grayson, out with a bruised shoulder. Jay Wilkerson, a 224-pound junior from Costa Mesa. Wilkerson, Wilkerson beat the lead back on that, who was Bocox right there, number 30, who was attempting to get him. But Wilkerson beat him, was able to loop around him and take Miller down. Sadal Langfeld wide to the left side. Humphrey is in the slot to the left. Egan is the tight end on the right side. Miller throwing out there to Pat Brown. Pin yard line five. Touchdown, New Mexico State. A 12, a 17-yard touchdown pass from the quarterback, Jim Miller, to Pat Brown out of the backfield. And the Aggies are first on the board tonight here at Bulldog Stadium. Have to think it's a broken assignment on this one because Pat Brown, the tailback, coming out of the backfield, had no one on him. Let's take a look at it again. Miller gets pretty good protection, gets the pass off early, but there's nobody even in the screen. Nobody at all even close to it. That's the seventh touchdown pass thrown this season by Jim Miller. The extra point kick by Jim Gill is good. And it is 7-0 New Mexico State. And this crowd is stunned here at Bulldog Stadium. As Announcing an exciting new concept in business computing. A computer specifically designed to quickly adapt to the ever-changing demands of your business. One that will effectively meet your current business needs and easily grow to meet those in the future. Announcing the Computerland Business Computing System. Powerful, incredibly flexible, and backed by the world's largest computer retailer, Computerland. The Computerland BCS. When your business grows, it won't be left behind. Grand Canyon walls hold the lure of white water. At the lip of the rapids, turbulence takes you. You plunge down troughs of lateral foam. The adventure is awesome, exhilarating. Your timepiece is bold, impregnable. Rolex Explorer 2. Available at Edmunds Jewelers, in Fashion Fair and on the Fulton Mall. No one expected this, New Mexico State to score first, but the Aggies have on the 19-yard touchdown pass from Miller to Pat Brown. The kickoff by Jim Gill, the barefooted one. Oh, pop up. I'll say it was, and calling for the fair catch, Paul Flug on a kickoff. You don't <laughs> see that very often, do you? Infield pop-up on that one by the kicker, Jim Gill. It's going to have great field position, though, to the Bulldogs. So once Bobby Kinder made the interception, and that certainly was the key for New Mexico State, the Aggies take it in on the touchdown pass. Now Fresno State will have a first down at the 33. 7-0 New Mexico State. Baker wide to the left side, Taylor wide to the right side. They will run out of the eye, and it's Mosley. First man through, Mosley up to the 37. And there is Bobby Kinder, the middle linebacker, once again. I'm sure you'll be hearing his name an awful lot tonight because he is exceptional. Second down and six. So mention we got a very quiet crowd tonight. Nobody really expected this, but uh, there are a few injuries on the Bulldog side. Not so many on offense, though. A lot on defense, and outside of Greg Williamson, a, a rebuilt secondary for Fresno State this week. It'll be a procedure penalty against Fresno State. Now, the line of scrimmage was the 37, so 
uh, the five-yard penalty will move the ball back to the 32. I think the culprit was number 71, Jeff Truchel, on that one. The Aggies are playing, they're making a lot of blitz fakes, and that's drawing. Well, we heard nothing but static when the referee, Bob Barrow, put the microphone on. But it was a procedure penalty, a five-yarder, and that'll make it second and 11 now for Fresno State with the ball back at the 32. Kevin Sweeney is ready to set up and fire, and this pass is dropped at the 35. Third down. It was James Williams out of the backfield that couldn't hold on. The pass was thrown low. So now it'll be third and 11 at the 32. I'm surprised that the Fresno State offense has sputtered in the first half against New Mexico State because teams have been able to average about 43 points a game against the Aggies. We still have over three minutes remaining in the first quarter. 7-0 New Mexico State. Kevin on third and 11. Look at the time he has. Now Kevin's going to take off. He's got a big pass up the right side. He's to the 35, the 40. He's got the first down out of bounds at the 43. Now that shows you the savvy of the senior quarterback from Bullard High School in Fresno. He knew where those sideline sticks were. He wanted to make sure the first down, even with the painful ribs, he was able to run and maneuver and pick up the first down. See him there checking all over the field looking for an open receiver was none and does, does a good thing there. We not only picks up the yardage but gets out of bounds before he takes that lick. Good block by Jeff Truchel, number 71 that time for Sweeney. Sweeney needed 11 yards, got 11 and a half. So it's a first down at the 43 of Fresno State. Out of the I formation, the give will be to Williams. And he can't slip one tackle. Holding on for dear life is Lenny Moore, a 220-pound junior from Bakersfield. He had a year of junior college ball at Bakersfield Community College. Ball spotted down at the 45, second down at 8. Mike Walden, Don Perkins from Fresno. We're nearing the end of the first quarter. 7-0, the Aggies from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mostly Williams in the backfield. They will go out of the eye. In motion comes Gene Taylor. Williams at the 45. Williams picks up two tough yards as Bobby Kinder clamps down on him. And Kinder got some help from some others, namely Daryl Ford. Williams moving the ball up close to the 47. Well, kind of the second week in a row that we've seen the Bulldogs be a little slow starting there. Anthony Mosley, number 37 leading on there, but nobody really gets a good shoulder into Bobby Kinder. Taylor will go wide to the right side. Brock Smith wide to the left. Stephen Baker is playing with a bad back. He's had back spasms all week, so his play might be sporadic in that lineup. Sweeney has a pass down the right side again. Will he run it? Yes, he will. Oh, he's written out of bounds. Very high. I don't know whether he anticipated the blow or tried to lean forward, but he was in midair when the collision occurred. Looks like uh, quite a lick, but uh, Sweeney has come back into the lineup, so evidently he's okay. Let's take a look at it. He's rolling out to his right. Trying to pick up a little block in there. Number 59, Steve Markey, I believe, is the guy that nailed him. I think it was Daryl Ford. Okay, Daryl Ford. Anyway, it's close to a first down. Fourth and about a yard, and the Bulldogs will go for it. Why not? Minute and a half to go in the first quarter. You're down 7 to nothing. The give is to Mosley, who plunges for the first down, moving to the 45. First down, Fresno State. I think the best statistic Anthony Mosley has this year is a pass receiving. He's caught 10 for 114 yards, but he can run the ball. An excellent runner going over the top that time and picked up the first and 10 yardage. But you know, Mosley has only 28 yards and 20 carries this season. Jim Sweeney says he may be the best all-around back he's got, though. There's a lot of good backs on this Bulldog team. Baker is wide to the left side. I think Kevin Sweeney wants to go to Baker if he can, and he can't. Well, he gets away from Campbell, and now Bobby Ante closes down on Kevin Sweeney and makes the sack near the 50. Good pressure from Joe Campbell coming in from his defensive end spot, and it was Bobby Ante who finished him off. And good effort by Sweeney on this one, too, because evidently nobody got a shoulder on Campbell. He comes in there at full speed, 
stride unbroken there, but Sweeney's able to slip him. Right now he can't spot anyone, but doesn't you lose as much yardage as he could have. Bobby Ante slowed him up and up, and then he got a little help from Jason Young. Baker and Williams are the wide receivers on opposite sides. Williams moving out of the picture at the bottom of the screen. Second and 15, Kevin Sweeney wants to throw if he can. Kevin's going to have to struggle just to get up close to the 45. It was Jason Young who is wearing a quarterback's number because at New Mexico State at one time, he was a quarterback. And Don Perkins, when was the last time you saw a quarterback converted into a defensive end? Well, I don't know what he was doing being quarterback anyway. He's 6'4", 240 pounds, so he was one of the bigger quarterbacks that has ever played college football. But does a great job there at defensive end. Offensive line not doing the job for the Bulldogs. They're, even without blitzing by the Aggies, they're putting pressure on Sweeney. Baker is out of there. The wide receivers for the Bulldogs will be Gene Taylor and Brock Smith. But that's the end of the first quarter. 7-0 New Mexico State over the Bulldogs. The reason we carry some of the product lines we do are because they're the top of the line. Uh, you take a Hunter ceiling fan line or low-pie stoves. Uh, coal or plumbing, they're the, the best, and that's what we want to carry is the best. And so we want to make sure that every customer is taken care of well and that the product that we sell them is a good product. Hello. Hi. Monday at Bye. 5. How was the movie? Uh, it was great. It was the scariest thing I've seen since Willis donated his head to that barber college. Next, learn the facts of life. Ever since she and Cliff broke up, she's been dating everything in Topsiders. <laughs> I had a wonderful... I'm sure you did, and maybe you will again sometime. Then at six, give me a break. <laughs> the laughter begins Monday at five on TV 26. Stephen Baker is back in the lineup for Fresno State. Paul Flew goes out. It'll be third and 21, first play of the second quarter. 7-0, New Mexico State leading. So the three wide receivers for the Bulldogs, Gene Taylor, Brock Smith, and Stephen Baker. Mosley and James out of the shotgun. In the backfield, there is Sweeney stepping up. He's going to run. Sweeney slides down at the 50-yard line. And Sweeney got a little pressure from the strong safety coming up, Ed Russell. The stats in the first quarter, well, it shows you, look at Fresno State, 52 to 9 in yards rushing, but total yards, 69-65. Yards passing, just 13 yards for Fresno State. Unbelievable. Barry Bella in punt formation for the Bulldogs. And Rossi Humphrey is standing back in his 12, awaiting Bella's punt. Humphrey at the 10. Rossi Humphrey to the 2. And is grabbed by the shoulder pad by Paul Fluke and Scott Duarte. And it's Duarte who finished him off. We have a break in the action here from Fresno. 7 0, the Aggies. I always thought that time was a measure of quality. Now they've got technology that can cut the time of aging beer to that. Bam. Instant beer. Not Coors. Coors ages their beer longer than any other major brewer. Almost twice as long. To age any beer longer, it gets smoother. More easy drink. More like Coors. Nope. Coors won't take shortcuts with time. Ah. Uh, Coors is the one. Jim Miller just missed on a pass to Rossi Humphrey. A little down and out pattern around the 35. Miller, not surrounded by red shirts, but there they come. He did unload it a little hurry and just threw it up for grabs there. Intended for Humphrey, but mainly just getting out of trouble. Line of scrimmage is the 22 of New Mexico State. A handoff to Anthony Singleton. Moving up to the 34. Our check it on the 24. Gain of two. Tackle was made by Brian Greer. A sophomore from Madeira. They're down an eight at the 24 of New Mexico State. Oh, 
The Aggies will send uh, Langfelt wide to the left side. In the slot is Gene Egan also to the left. Miller pulls back. Heavy pressure this time. He's able to get away. Penalty marker is dropped. And Miller is able to complete the pass almost for the first down. Anthony Singleton made the tackle or made the catch. And the tackle was made by Greg Ramsey with some help from Anthony Nunn. How do you like that cutoff uniform of Jim Miller? The yeah, bare he, midriff. He can get his midriff a little scarred out there. He got off a nice pass that time. His offensive line kind of caved in around him. It looked like he had to do a little shovel pass, underhanded pass, to get it off that time to Singleton. Find out what the infraction is. And there's the cutoff jersey, Jim Miller. Completed 6 out of 10 for 60 yards and 1 TD for the night. Let's see if Bob Barrow's microphone is working. It is indeed. So the ball goes back just inside the 15. Aggies are really looking pretty good so far in the first uh, quarter of this game. Not looking like a team that's on a four-game losing streak. Giving up 41 points in those four games. Egan is wide to the right side. Langfelt wide to the left. Miller is sacked. Fumbles the ball. And the Bulldogs claim they have it at the 12. It may be Ramsey. I think it's Ramsey coming in from I think the blind so side there. There's Miller. And right there, 87, Greg Ramsey but clobbering him. They had to rule a, an incomplete forward pass because the Aggies are booting on uh, fourth down and a good kick by Aldez. Reversing the field is Baker. He's got a little line and he's out of bounds around the 40-yard line. Out of bounds at the 41. The Bulldogs will have a first down at the New Mexico State 41. 7-0 the Aggies. Last year, an independent firm surveyed over 30,000 new car owners regarding the initial quality of their cars. 143 models were ranked, representing 29 manufacturers. As you might expect, Mercedes-Benz did very well, with two models in the top 10. However, Toyota finished first, with six models in the top 10, including the first, second, third, and fourth place winners. See the winning quality for yourself at your Toyota dealers today. First and ten at the 41 of New Mexico State. Sweeney going for... Luke Smith, touchdown, Fresno State. Brock Smith making the grab, a 41-yard touchdown. And Brock Smith, with great speed, beats Todd Parker, the quarterback of New Mexico State. Kevin Sweeney threw it up. He, he put the ball up and let Brock Smith run underneath it. Let's take a look at it. The pass protection's good. Right there, he just puts the ball up in the air. Let Sweeney, let Smith outrun Lloyd Bradley there into the end zone. That's one of those big home run hitters. The extra point try by Barry Belli is good. We have a tie game, seven all, early in the second quarter from Bulldog Stadium. If your home was destroyed, would your insurance pay to completely rebuild it? Fact is, even with an inflation clause, your policy may not cover today's higher rebuilding costs. Leave it to the good hands, people. Allstate can make sure you're protected. With an Allstate home replacement cost guarantee, we'll pay to completely rebuild your home, no matter what the cost. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. lucky numbers. If the numbers you pick click, you could win a jackpot of millions of dollars. It's a new way to play, the way you play your own way. Watch it roll, play lotto. So the Bulldogs are tied with the Aggies. Just under 13 minutes left in the first half. Belli to kick off to either Rossi Humphrey or Todd Parker. And it will be Humphrey at the nine. Humphrey to the 20, hurdles his way up to the 25. 
I don't know whether Rossi Humphrey has gone out for track, but he looked like a hurdler that time. Mike Withicum saying something over there in the sidelines, and Miller is on the field for New Mexico State. They'll stay with him for the most part, but they've got another quarterback, Phil Vinson, that if uh, Miller's not getting the job done, Coach Knoll is not afraid to go with Vinson. Benny Thomas and Schroeder wide to the left side. The give is to Roger Bocox. And Rogers able to pick up a couple of yards up to about the 28. Cliff Hanneman on the tackle. Second down and seven. 7-7 seven, seven tie following that 41-yard touchdown pass from Kevin Sweeney to Brock Smith. And by the way, that was Sweeney's 62nd touchdown pass in his career. Miller across the middle, a man wide open, Benny Thomas, and Thomas is cut down at the 44. Tony Harris, who was filling in for the injured Rod Webster, made the tackle at the 44. A pickup of 16 and a first down for the underdog Aggies of New Mexico State. And Mike Knoll has got to be pleased with the performance of his team to this point. Riding a four-game losing streak, he has to be pleased. And uh, it's been a long year so far. The Aggies one and five, looking for win number two. Actually, the losing streak is a little longer than that on the road. Seven straight road losses for the Aggies. Pat Brown up near midfield. Tackle made by Anthony Nunn. Now to our sideline reporter, Vic Jacobs. I'm right here by the New Mexico State bench, and I'm telling you, these guys are pumped. They are stunned by the Brock Smith touchdown pass, but they are not broken. They are psyched. In fact, head coach Mike Knoll hugged every cornerback when they came off the field saying, nope, no, don't be upset. Get them next time. So this team is still in it and tough. Well, Mike Knoll comes from a winning program. He was an assistant coach the last couple of years with the University of Miami Hurricanes. This goes to Pat Brown out of the backfield, and it's good down to the 44 of Fresno State. Greg Williamson, Cliff Hanneman collaborating on the tackle. It'll be a first down at the 44 of Fresno State. Humphrey saying something to the quarterback, Jim Miller, and once in a while, a receiver will say to the quarterback, I think I can beat my man, come to me. So let's see if Miller now goes to Rossi Humphrey. Humphrey is split off to the left side. Miller goes to the right side, and Pat Brown couldn't bring this one in. That's a pass that should have been caught as Brown came out of the backfield couldn't bring it in. No doubt, it'll show up. Uh, it'll show up on the statistic that Miller has an incomplete pass, but actually he threw that one right in the hands of number 29, Pat Brown, coming out of the brass backfield. Jim Miller, as, as Jim Sweeney yells out something to the Bulldogs. A 7-7 tie. 11 minutes left in the first half. Miller will set up the throw again, and he's going to go long and deep. Langfelt makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. Went out of bounds around the 18. Sadow Langfelt. Daryl James covering for the Bulldogs. Actually, had the pass been inside just a little bit, he had uh, he had James beat on that one, but the pass was thrown too much over his outside shoulder. It took him out of bounds. Jim Miller has completed 8 out of 14 for 83 yards and a touchdown. And we have about 11 minutes to be played in the first half. Miller's stats have been good tonight for New Mexico State. Miller trying to improve on that if he can. Pumps once, unloads, no good. He was throwing to Benny Thomas. Down around the 30. And the Red Wave trying to get the wave started here at Bulldog Stadium and generate some noise. It's been a quiet crowd on this second Saturday in October. Good defensive stand that time by the Bulldog uh, defensive unit. It looked like the Aggies had something going, but the Bulldogs shut them down. Aldez gets a high snap from center. He's punting to Stephen Baker, puts it up high. Fair catch is signaled for by Baker at the 13. And that is a rarity in itself. Baker doesn't signal for a fair catch often. I like that. Baker's got mocked. He catches everything out there, usually without the benefit of the fair catch. A 31-yard punt by Aldez, and now Kevin Sweeney and company will take over with a first down. 7-7 tie early in the second quarter. 
New Mexico State, one and five, one and two in the PCAA. Fresno State, three and one overall, 0 and one in the league. Mosley and Williams in the backfield. Baker and Taylor, the wide receivers. Kevin has time to set up and fires this one to Mosley, who is ridden piggyback by Sam Dickey, a linebacker. They will mark the forward progress to the 18. Gain of four. One thing New Mexico State has been able to prevent tonight, except for one occasion, that's a long bomb by Kevin Sweeney. That's right. Brock Smith caught him by burning him for that one, but they've got so many offensive weapons on the Bulldog team. Uh, you got to watch them all night. Sweeney dishes this off to Mosley. Anthony Mosley up to around the 25 and continues to move to pick up the first down. He had to get to the 25 to get the first down, but Mosley wasn't finished as he picked up an additional yard up to the 26. And credit Paul Portizzi, a 263-pound right guard of the Bulldogs, making a fine block, helping Mosley get up to the 26. First down for the Dogs from their own 26. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Dugan moves over a tight end on the right side. The give is to Mosley. Mosley to the 30. Mosley to the 37-yard line. The left cornerback, Lloyd Bradley, brought down the Fresno State fullback. A great block. We're going to see a great block. Look at the top of your screen, number 29. Right there, leading Mosley, number 29, James Williams, throwing an excellent block for Mosley. Boy, when you got that kind of uh, blocking, uh, you'll always pick up yardage. And generally, it's Mosley doing the blocking for Williams. Just the reverse this time. Penalty marker is down. As Williams was the ball carrier, brought it up to about the 50. But the whistle had blown about the time the ball was snapped. It'll be a procedure call against Fresno State. Next week, next Saturday night at 7 o'clock, here at Bulldog Stadium, the Tigers of UOB come in to Fresno. And the Tigers won today. Ball, illegal procedure, offense, still won. UOP defeated at UNLV up in Stockton, 21 to 15. The Tigers are 2-0 in the PCAA. So a big one certainly next Saturday night. But a big one here for the Bulldogs. They're tied right now, 7-7, trying to break the tie. It's Kevin Sweeney. He's going long for Baker, and he can't get it. Baker couldn't catch up with that 65-yard bomb tossed by Kevin Sweeney. Todd Parker matching Baker almost step for step. Well, he was playing about 10 yards off of Baker on this when you see Sweeney there launching the rocket. But uh, Todd Parker is playing so far off of Baker that uh, Baker really has no shot at him. Parker tried to make an over-the-shoulder interception. The stats on Kevin Sweeney here in the first half. James Williams, one of the wide receivers that Kevin will try to hit on this play. It's complete to Brock Smith, and oh, does he take a lick. Darrell Ford, the 210-pound linebacker, jerked his head back with that hit. He will mark his forward progress to the 39. Kevin Sweeney is now number three on the NCAA career passing list. He just moved ahead of Ben Bennett. So Sweeney, even though he doesn't have impressive stats, has moved up two notches tonight. Now he has just Brian McClure of Bowling Green and Doug Flutie of Boston ahead. Out of the shotgun. Kevin has time. To his right, says go down and long and deep for Gene Taylor. Can Taylor catch up with it? No. Overthrew him by about five yards. Kevin was trying to direct traffic as saying, Put on your afterburners. Get out of there. I'll yeah. hit you with it. The Aggies defensively, though, are dropping off a great deal of Gene Taylor and number 81, Stephen Baker. There you see a lot of good pass protection for Sweeney there. He's rolling out, motion and go downfield. But you're going to see Craig Thompson right there running stride for stride with Taylor. And it's a holding penalty against Fresno State declined by New Mexico State. In the punt for Fresno will be Barry Bella and dropping back deep, Rosso Humphrey. Eight and a half minutes left in the first half. We're tied at seven in this PCAA game. Chris Dugan to make the snap. Barry Bella gets away another beauty. 
Humphrey back to the 21. Humphrey's going to be chased down. And it's Jay Wilkerson again on the Fresno State special teams to make the tackle. Good play by Wilkerson. Eight and a half minutes left till halftime. Today's game is brought to you in part by Allstate. Leave it to the good hands, people, to insure your car, business, home, and family. And by the California Lottery. It's a good feeling for a lot of good reasons. Monday. A troubled ex-agent. Did you see through his disguise, Watson? You think it's... Moriarty. A fictitious villain. He has enough information in that scrambled brain of his to start a war. No way! A conspiracy that could cost Higgins his life. I need to know where the doctor is and where we can find your friend. World-class detective work leaves Thomas Higgins. in the dark on Magnum. Monday night at 7 on TV 26. has premium on leaded. New Super 76. Spirit. A Super 76. It's a brand new spirit. High octane, huh? None higher. Spirit of 76. Super Spirit. Spirit of 76. Come and get it. For a man who has completed only 42% of his passes coming into this game tonight, Jim Miller is having an exceptional first half. He's 8 out of 14, 83 yards, and a touchdown. Run down this time by Greg Ramsey. Ramsey, a 252-pound senior from Colinga, making the sack of Jim Miller. That'll move the ball all the way back to the 13. Loss of 9. Let's take a look at Ramsey's pass rush on this one. You see he's getting a lot of effort there, but... Uh... Really, it took Miller quite a bit of time to get that pass off. It looks like the Aggies have abandoned the run, and they're going to throw the ball the rest of the season. Rossi Humphrey is to the left side. He goes to the right. Coming out of the backfield is Keith Lott. Lott turns it upfield to about the 27. Keith Lott is a converted defensive back. They converted him to offense at the start of fall drills, and he's been a pleasant surprise. Rivera and James brought him down. A gain of about 13, so call it third and six for New Mexico State. Gene Egan to the right side. Thomas and Langenfeld to the right. Miller going in that direction to Langenfeld. He's at the 40 and crunch down right at the 40. The hit made by Eddie Bustamante. Bustamante filling in for the... Strong safety, Michael Stewart. From the ground level, we're going to look at the pass route there. Well, we don't see much of the pass route, but we see Miller rolling out and Langenfeld coming inside there. It's been a long time since we've seen a running play. Miller's been known to throw the ball. He set the school record last year when he threw 60 times against West Texas. Wide receivers, two of the wide outs to the right side on first and 10 at the 40. 7-7 seven, seven, tie. Miller hands off to Keith Lott. There's your running play, Don Perkins, and Lott picks up two. Now I see why we don't see more running plays. The tackle made by John Carippo, who weighs only 175 pounds, the lightest nose guard playing college football today. Second and eight at the 42. Paul Schroeder will go out to the right side along with Egan. And Humphrey is to the left. Second and eight. Miller sprinting out to the right. Going to reverse his field. And in hot pursuit comes the Tade. Miller is a little bit faster than the Tade. Miller out of bounds at the 49. And he's able to pick up a first down. He had to get to the 50 for the first down. Got an extra yard to make sure as he gingerly tiptoes out of bounds at the 49. Actually, Miller is faster than a Tate, but not a great deal because there was a lot of open field out here for quarterback Jimmy Miller to run. You see a Tate there in pursuit. He has an angle. Miller cannot get around him without going out of bounds, though. First down for the Aggies of New Mexico State at the Fresno 49. 7-7 deadlock. Six minutes left in the first half. Mike Walden and Don Perkins. 
The inside handoff goes to Keith Lott, and Lott has some good running room down to the 43, a gain of six. Tackle made by John O'Leary. Well, I said the Aggies had pretty much abandoned the run, but you can't abandon it completely because you're going to have to slow down those defensive linemen somewhat. So every once in a while, they're going to have to throw a running play in there. And I haven't seen a screen play yet either, Mike. That's something that uh, a screen or a draw is always good to slow down the tough charging defensive front four. Sadal Langfelt goes out wide to the right side. In the slot to the right is Gene Egan. Humphrey to the left. A little pass incomplete. He was trying to hit Singleton coming out of the backfield. Anthony Singleton. So far, I like the way that New Mexico State has been calling the plays. I don't know if that's due to Mike Knoll or the offensive coordinator, Mike uh, DeFatty, who was up on the press box or what, but they, they've had a good mix. They have had a good mix. Uh, what they were doing early in the first quarter was not working at all, and they've come up with a passing scheme, a shorter game that is effective. Third and four, New Mexico State. The ball at the 43 of Fresno State. Seven all here. A little under five and a half minutes left in the first half. This one is grabbed by Lott, 30. Lott to the 20. Keith Lott to the 10. Touchdown, Keith Lott, New Mexico State. 43 yards. Miller to Keith Lott coming out of the backfield. And the Aggies, who stunned the Bulldogs earlier, taking a 7 and nothing lead, come right back and sting them again. Keith Lott, number 36, coming out of the backfield right there. It's almost like a little pick play, but there's nobody really following Lott at all. Hey, Mike, I think I might be able to run that one in. There's still nobody in the screen there. Finally, Byron Nichols shows up, but Lott was all by himself. Mm -hmm. That was Daryl James showing up, but showing up late. Trying to kick the extra point will be Jim Gill out of the hole of Miller. It's bobbled, and he still gets it away and still is able to kick it. And Miller gets all the credit in the world for that when he bobbled the snap, still able to get it up. And Gill was able to drill it through. 14 to net, 14 to 7, the Aggies lead. Who's going to be at the Silver Bullet tonight? Sally, don't look now, but he's here. Don't oh, look. And he's sitting at my station. Fran, you owe me. All right. <laughs> Blue, how do I look? Like Sally. Thanks. Light, please. I'll get your waitress. <laughs> I'm just not in the mood. Go slowing down with a silver bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. Your Toyota dealers present the hard facts. Fact. They've got the standard beds with more payload, higher towing capacity, and better MPG than Nissan's hard bodies. Fact. They've got the 4x4s with a longer cruising range than Nissan's. Fact. They've got the best selection of compacts in the business, a great supply, and the deals to make them fly. Want a hard body? Do push-ups. Want a tough truck? Get the hard facts. The number one selling compact truck. Only at your Toyota dealer. On the extra point attempt, Steve Markey is snapping the ball to Jim Miller. Watch this. Low snap. Miller has the presence of forethought to still pick it up. And then it's drilled home by Jim Gill. Good work by Jim Miller, the quarterback, who is doing it all, as they say. And I tell you what, number 25, Ireland, was not giving them any breathing room. He was right in position. Probably should have gone. 14 to 7, New Mexico State. A side over side kick is fielded by Brock Smith to the 25. And he stopped at the 27. David Ryder on the hit. And the Aggies are really fired up now. First led 7 to nothing, and then Kevin Sweeney and company caught up on a 41-yard pass to Brock Smith. But New Mexico State coming right back on the pass play of 43 yards in all on the swing pass to Keith Lott out of the backfield. 14 to 7, the Aggies. From the 27. As you look at Kevin Sweeney's stats, the pitch to Williams, James Williams to the 32. Williams picking up a gain of uh, six. They're going to spot it down at the 33. Second down and four. This is the kind of game, Mike, if you're an Aggie, you kind of like to play. They were 1-10 last year. They're 1-5 this year. Uh, they've got everything to gain and nothing to lose. They can throw caution to the wind. Gene Taylor, wide to the left side. Flug is the tight end, wide on the right side. 
Good run here by Anthony Mosley. They were expecting Williams or Sweeney to throw, and Mosley crossed them up, moving the ball up to the 47. The tackle made by George Ned. And a first down for Fresno State. Vic Jacobs, what do you have? It's been visiting down with the New Mexico State bench. Hey, this team is having fun. I've been over to the Fresno State bench. They're a little bit uptight. So right now, the Aggies are having much more fun, and they're winning, and that's important, this ball game. They give us to Williams. He is stacked up after a one-yard pickup at the 48. By the way, Don Perkins, who was that fellow that held up a score? Fresno State 76, New Mexico State 6 before the start of the game. Do you know who that would be? Could not have been our man on the side. No, but, uh, no way. Vic would not no. have. Who was that guy? Who was that guy? I don't know. Who was it? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, I think another guy uh, opened up the top of the show saying that uh, the Bulldogs would take no prisoners tonight. <laughs> well, whatever. Who could that be? Second and nine at the 48. And on the swing pass, Sweeney overthrows Mosley. I don't know whether Kevin is having an off first half or is really hurting from the bruised ribs of earlier in the game, and I am inclined to think that is affecting his throwing. What do you think, Don? Uh, I don't know, but Joe Campbell had himself wrapped right around Kevin Sweeney on that one, but uh, uh, the fullback, Mosley, was right out there in the open. It looked like it would have been a completion, but uh, I think he had to hurry. Baker to the right. Taylor to the left. Split backs, Mosley and James Williams for Kevin Sweeney. Third and nine at the 48. 14-7 New Mexico State. Sweeney steps up, tries to twist away, and can't get away from Joe Campbell. I tell you, this guy Campbell at 6'4 and 225 from Tempe, Arizona, has been in Sweeney's back pocket most of this first half. We're looking at him right there. Somebody has to lay a glove on him. Otherwise, he's going to be in your backyard all night. Barry Belli to punt on fourth down. Rossi Humphrey will get ready to field this one around the 15. Three minutes left in this first half. 14 to 7, New Mexico State. Good snap from Dugan, and here is the punt by Belli. Beauty. Fair catch signal for by Humphrey, and he's got the ball near the 20. Well, surprise, the Aggies, the underdog, decided underdog Aggies leading 14 to 7 as we close down on the first half. The numbers you pick, click, you could win a jackpot of millions of dollars. It's a new way to play, the way you play your own way. Watch it roll, play lotto. Winning play attempted by the Aggies. Roger Bocox gets from the 20 to the 23, tackled by Mike Walker. The secondary has really been almost completely rebuilt, or at least three-fourths uh, rebuilt for Fresno State. Byron Nichols may be out for a month with a bad knee. Rod Webster hasn't played with ribs, bruised ribs. Michael Stewart is out with an ankle. And so that secondary has been tested here by James Miller. And Miller completes this one to Pat Brown, who was put down near the 25-yard line. The only regular in that secondary for the Bulldogs is Greg Williamson. Bustamante is filling in for Michael Stewart, Tony Harris for Rod Webster, and Thomas Ireland for Byron Nichols. And I'm not so sure it's the secondary being tested that much, other than uh, I think perhaps it's the linebackers, because Miller's going with a very short passing game. Backs coming out of the backfield, little flares and things, and they're working. Second, and uh, check it, it's third and four. Miller sprinting out to his left, throwing on the run, hits Benny Thomas, and Thomas, it takes four Bulldogs to stack him up and bring him down at the 39, then push him back to the 34. The two that arrived on the scene first, Daryl James and Eddie Bustamante. It's Thomas, he's got a little, little tape on his hand, and he was shaking that hand. He's, now he's going to the sidelines there. Four catches, 450 yards tonight. Bear in mind, this guy was a walk-on. He's now the Aggies' number one receiver. And he just picked up a first down for New Mexico State. First down at the 39. It's Bocox, Roger Bocox from Harrington, Texas, carrying up to the 42. Well, if this is a one-in-five team, I'd like to 
see some other one in five teams play as well as the Aggies have tonight. Good game plan by Mike Knoll. Yeah, they did some adjustments there after the opening quarter, and the adjustments they've made have, uh, have been very effective. When you consider that Noel brought only 44 players, he had a shakedown cruise this week. <laughs> says, I want guys who are going to play and play hard. I don't care what the score, only 44 made it to Fresno. But the 44 have done a job, 14 to 7 Aggies. Tumble on an inside handoff. The Bulldogs say they have it. With the ball is Chris Reinhardt, a linebacker. Pat Brown couldn't handle the inside handoff from quarterback Jim Miller. And Reinhardt, a junior from Spring Valley, California, made the recovery. Well, let's see if this could turn the game around. It certainly could. 45 seconds till the end of the first half. And now the Bulldogs prepared to go into the locker room down 14 to 7 have an opportunity to get at least three and maybe seven Mike when you get the uh, when you get the ball on the opponent's 41 42 yard line if you're any kind of offensive ball club you've got to do something with it three wideouts for Fresno State Stephen Baker Gene Taylor Brock Smith from the 42 you know what Kevin Sweeney's gonna do that's right if he has enough time and he shovels it off the fluke at the 40 35 Paul fluke to the 31 fluke would just stand it around with nothing to do and suddenly Kevin Sweeney says hey I can't go deep here it is Paul do your thing fluke is tackled by Daryl Ford and Bobby Kinder he'd already for a first down already completed this pass route about a one yard turnout and was just kind of looking around for something and there it is nice presence of mind by Sweeney to get that pass off the fluke there's a good block by Truchel, and Sweeney is out of bounds at the 33. Lenny Moore running him out of bounds. Timeout is called by Fresno State. 23 seconds left in the first half. The Aggies on top, 14 to 7. Have you looked at Allstate homeowners insurance rates lately? Nope. They may be lower than you think. They are low. Leave it to the good hands people. Leave it to the good hands people. Bring your policy into Allstate and compare. See how low our rates really are. Leave it to the good hands people. They're low. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. The defense of New Mexico State huddled around uh, the assistant coaches over in the sidelines. 23 seconds, and I'm sure the Aggies are vowing not to let the Bulldogs to get in for any sort of a score in the final 23 seconds. Mike Withicum trotting off the field, and he has a few words over there with the equipment manager, so a small equipment repair. And Kevin Sweeney back into the huddle. The Bulldogs hoping to get something here in the final 23 seconds of the half. I tell you what, they're testing Coach Jim Sweeney's patience. Last week came up with a loss. This week just kind of playing mediocre here in the first half. Baker to the right, Taylor to the left, out of the I formation. Sweeney is going to be racked up by Joe Campbell. Can't somebody block that number 99? That's got to be Jim Sweeney's. Well, there he is. We're looking at Joe Comments Campbell. on the sidelines. Penalty marker was dropped as Joe Campbell from Tempe, Arizona. In there on another sack of Kevin Sweeney. Take another look at that. Campbell's been a busy man. You see Sweeney there rolling out toward his left, and that's where Campbell is coming from. Runs right into the arms of him. Uh, I see the flag being thrown right there as he's going down. Look like maybe number 71, Pauline. Jeff Truchel. On the offense, refused. Well, the penalty, of course, declined because now we have only 19 seconds left, and they'll take the down and the loss as the ball goes back to the 41. Sure, the holder that time was Jeff Truchel. I wish the officials would call him out by number. I like that. I do, too. Yeah, that's good. And I think it should be, after all, the players who get the accolades for what they do well and if they make a mistake, they make a mistake. Of course, the officials could be wrong and get the wrong guy, too. Okay. Big Jacobs, what do you have? Maybe want to wish 
Harry Pappas and KMPH, uh, happy 15th anniversary of their sign-on, the most successful independent TV station in America today. Everyone here, the staff, want to wish Harry Pappas and King KMPH a happy 15th anniversary. It was back October 11th, 1975, when K KMPH first signed on here in Central California. Back to you guys in the booth. And we will second those thoughts, Vic, and your pay raise will be approved on Monday. Eric Bouchel is the quarterback. Bouchel, the quarterback, in place of Kevin Sweeney. Bouchel going to go long and deep for Baker. Knocked down at the five-yard line. That stops the clock with 13 seconds left. And a great surprise there with Sweeney out and Bouchel throwing deep. Kevin's got to be hurting. Looking at number six there, coming back, Todd Parker, the free safety for the Aggies. That was the defender. You see the time there, too. 13 seconds left in this first half of play. Looking across on the sidelines, Kevin is over there holding his helmet in his right hand, and a timeout again called by Fresno State. Remember, right after the game, the Central Valley Toyota dealers will present tonight's inspirational award to the player whose outstanding performance in this game will earn him this special honor. I've got the glasses over in the sidelines on Kevin Sweeney, and he's just pacing up and down in front of the Fresno State bench. 13 seconds left. Bouchel is the quarterback, and it's still 14 to 7, New, Mo New Mexico State over the Bulldogs of Fresno. Well, if nothing happens here before halftime, we'll see what happens in the third quarter because no one has scored on the Bulldogs all year long in the third quarter. That's Ed Ferreira, one of the Fresno State trainers, talking with Kevin. Kevin is trying to convince the trainers that he's okay, but he's not in there now. Barry Belli will try a field goal from the 48 yard line this would be a 58 yarder he's never kicked one this far before 55 yards yes but never 58 and now New Mexico State has called for a timeout so the wheels are turning here in the final 13 seconds of the first half with the Aggies on top 14 to 7 trying to figure out how much strategy you can come up with when somebody's just attempting a field goal try to block it Barry Mike Dole has got something else in mind. Barry Belli kicked a field goal of 55 yards last year at New Mexico State. Right against these same Aggies. And he also kicked a 55-yarder earlier this year. Now, he has that distance. He has kicked field goals of 65, 67 yards in practice. But it's one thing to do it on the practice field, another thing to do it in the heat of battle. Or... You suppose we could have a fake? Final 13 seconds? I would think not, but nevertheless, that is a possibility. Jim Sweeney's team is down 14 to 7. He's working on his halftime speech. He's got some words he wants to lay on. Ron Jenkins will hold, and he's kneeling down at the 49, so this would be a 59-yard field goal. It's got the distance. It is no good. It had the distance, and then the ball sort of died and fell about five yards shy in front of the goal post. So the 59-yard field goal attempt by Barry Belli, no good. Barry has missed one from the 40 and now from 59 yards out. Eight seconds still halftime. The Aggies 14-7. They will take over at the 41. A tight formation. Miller probably will just fall down with the ball, and that's indeed what he will do. And they will run off the clock. So at halftime, a surprise. New Mexico State, a huge underdog coming into this one, leading Fresno State 14-7 at halftime. I think Vic Jacobs is standing by with Jim Sweeney. Go, Vic. Thanks, Mike and Don. Coach, uh, exactly uh, what went wrong in the first half? <laughs> well, they're playing awfully well. Uh, playing better than we thought they were. They've had marvelous uh, defensive concept, which is very simple, three deep zone. Most people have never defensed us like that. They're taking great drops. 
Our pass offense is not functioning like we should. We're not getting quite enough protection to work against that three deep zone. We're going to have to shorten the routes, throw the ball underneath a little bit better, try to do some more things from five-step drop rather than seven-step drop. We're going to have to run the football a little better, going to have to hang tough. This is a very beat-up football team after the San Jose game, as they were up there this afternoon. I'm sure that uh, we're going to try to gather it together and rally in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Okay. We'll be back with more halftime festivities right after this. Monday night, the evil that abides in all of us is loose. Can he be stopped? I'm going to have to teach you too. Christopher George. I didn't kill anybody. Graduation day. Monday night at 8 on TV 26. Hi. This is Max Headroom's Pop Quiz. Blindfold, please. Pop. Quicker next time. In Blind Taste Test, which pop drink did more people prefer? The new taste of Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Wrong. I love questions. Coke. Coke. The new taste of Coke. It's true. You heard it here first. Catch the wave. Coke. See the incredible Coke KBOS video van tomorrow from noon to 2 p.m. at Vons and Marks and Shaw. Get a free Red Wave hand and save on all your favorite Coke products. Catch the wave, Coke. The way I see it, people used to know about nature, respected it, then they figured they'd try to make it better. Take beer. Can you imagine why anyone would want to add anything artificial to something that just comes naturally from ingredients like grain? Water, barley, hops, <laughs> neither can Coors. Those who have waited and waited can now see the light. For Toyota introduces a car close to perfection. The all-new 1987 Toyota Camry. Camry gets more power to pass from a new 16-valve fuel-efficient engine cabin for five, and more of the Toyota quality that has made Camry the most trouble-free new car, domestic or import, sold in America. Who could ask for anything more, Toyota? Fresno State and its athletic program have come a long way in the past 15 years, and although great teams have played a major role in the success, the athletic department's commitment to the athlete as a student and individual is of equal importance. Riding the crest of the red wave, the FSU athletic program has produced a winning tradition and quest for excellence in all sports. The red wave is more than just a group of fans supporting their team. It's a powerful force that has become part of the team concept of winning. They're cognizant of the red wave always. And they are the red wave themselves when they're on the sideline. I think that a lot of them come here because Fresno State has that kind of support. You know, you come in and it's a packed house and, and you look in the stands and, and everyone's wearing red. And then as the game gets going, you see this wave going around and it's just get, it gets louder and louder and louder. And as you're playing, that just kind of motivates you even that much more to do a little better job. This place gets rocking. You're on the field, it just gets, it gets really noisy. You can't hear defensive calls. We line up and we're trying to make adjustments. And you can't hear nothing. And then when they get the wave going, it's awesome. My first game here against uh, Las Vegas, and I dropped the pass because I was listening for the red wave. And ever since then, I've learned how to control it and you know hear them after I've made the catch and or the touchdown. It makes you take a lot of pride in, in getting yourself ready to play, and, and those people are there and they're loyal fans. And, and last year we had we were sold out and had people here on the berms watching us play, and it, and it makes you think about what you're doing and, and commit yourself to getting the job done right.
Getting the job done right, whether it's on the playing field or in the classroom, is a twofold priority at Fresno State. The red wave takes on an even greater significance when you consider what the support of the Bulldog Foundation, the booster clubs, and the community in general has made possible. Two of the finest athletic facilities in the country, Bulldog Stadium and Biden Field. A superb weight training facility with a state-of-the-art strength and conditioning program. It's also the athletic department's commitment to the individual that gives priority to a tutoring and counseling program that serves to meet the academic goals of the student athlete. You are here for your education. You can step off the bus and get hit with a high-powered vehicle on the way to play Fullerton. Your career can end in football in 30 seconds with a clip. You're going to be seen through your education here. If it takes you five years to finish school, and if, if you've gone through school the way you should, attend a class, try to take care of the tutorial aid where we are putting over $100,000 into our tutorial aid system. If you've done that, our administration is geared because that stadium is filled, taking in $2 million a year income. We're putting it back into the education of their athlete. In addition to counseling and planning, there's a unique self-help program available. The Student Athlete Assistance Program is designed to help athletes with many types of problems. Some of the areas of concentration deal with personal or emotional problems, chemical dependencies, illnesses, legal, financial, or marital problems. Again, the emphasis here is on the individual. The most important thing a guy has to think about is how much is this program going to care about me? And, and my development as a student athlete and how much is a student a factor in that development or am I just an athlete to these people? Uh, am I going to get my education out of this? And the, and the coaching staff here and the people that are supporting, the, they support the academics Im immensely. We are always pushed. We want that athlete to have every opportunity that every other student has here. But at the same token, we will provide counseling, we will provide tutoring, the little extras without breaking the rules uh, for that student to, to get an education. And I would hope that every one of our student athletes, I know it's not feasible, but every one of our student athletes would graduate at some time. Uh, that would make us all very proud. We try to tell our students, try to tell our players that Fresno State has risen to a position more near their potential but it's still going higher and that through identification when they go to compete against the Stanford people and the USC people in the business world then it will be important that they were with a strong athletic affiliate. The athletic program at Fresno State is a source of pride for all the students and alumni of the university, as well as the entire community. FSU is producing some fine athletic teams and a winning tradition. But it's also producing some fine individuals who will soon take their place as leaders in our society. And isn't that what a university system is all about? We'll be back with more halftime festivities right after this. Dear Mr. Davila, I get the best quality and the lowest total tape in the same store, Vons. At Vons, you get Jersey-made quality check dairy products and great weekly specials. And now, when three or more people are in line, we'll open another check stand, guaranteed. You'll find an express lane always open, and you'll find more service managers and more courtesy clerks, guaranteed. Come to Vons for warehouse prices, no sacrifices, and now more service, guaranteed. Don't pay more, come get more. Vons is a more store. From the moment you walk on to the 8-acre Paul Everett RV Center, you'll find something unique. It could be the 12-day service center, or the fully stocked RV accessory store, or Paul Everett's overwhelming selection of name brand motorhomes, travel trailers, and fifth wheels. But again, it could be the people. 45 of the most friendly, knowledgeable people in the RV business. So come on out to Paul Everett's RV Country, Freeway 99 at Central, and just follow the sign. Sheraton Smugglers, Fresno's mobile four-star rated inn, offers you more than you dreamed at less than you thought. A relaxing pool and spa set in a park-like landscape. And many guest-pleasing extras, exercise and weight room, 
free satellite TV, in-room coffee, room service. You'll love the life of Sheraton Smugglers. Monday at 5.30. I've been seeing Cliff broke up. She's been dating everything in Topsiders. <laughs> Had a wonderful I'm sure you did, and maybe you will again sometime. <laughs> Learn the facts of life, then at six. <laughs> Give me a break, and at six thirty. Oh, no, really, it was my pleasure. Uh, Iris, after all, it is my baby. I think I should be the one to pay Monroe. Eleven fifty. Monday, beginning at five thirty on TV Twenty Six. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. The halftime score, a surprising one. New Mexico State, the Aggies 14, Fresno State still in a San Jose Funk, only seven at the half. What's happening elsewhere around the country? Let's go to Vic's great wall of scores. Utah State and San Jose State, the Spartans come back. They were losing 28-6 at the half. San Jose comes back in the second half behind Mike Perez to beat the Aggies by 10 in San Jose. Pacific, Bob Culp's wishbone keeps rolling. They beat the running Rebels by six up in Stockton. Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Long Beach tonight. It is Long Beach, the 49ers leading it by 13 in the third. Meanwhile, in Palo Alto today, it was the Huskies beating Stanford. Of course, the Cardinals off to their best start since 1952, but the Huskies win in Palo Alto today. Eight straight wins for the Huskies over the Cardinals. Great game down in the Rose Bowl today. UCLA claims, comes back behind Gaston Green, who went crazy in the fourth quarter to beat Arizona 32-25. And the upset of the day in Pullman, Washington State 34, Southern Cal 14. Big upset for Jim Walden up in Pullman. Meanwhile, Arizona State, the Sun Devils keep rolling. John Cooper's Sun Devils over Oregon and Eugene, 37 to 12. And Joe Capps Bears can't buy a win. Oregon State, the Beavers win at 14 to 12 in Berkeley today. Top 20 action around the country. <laughs> All those Wild and Looney Kane of Miami, they're wild. They beat West Virginia, they killed them 58-14 down in Morgantown. Alabama keeps rolling, they shut out the winless Memphis State Tigers. Michigan beats Michigan State 27-6, of course, the Spartans without their All-American Lorenzo White. Penn State came back and beat the pesky Bearcats of Cincinnati 23-17. Remember, a couple of years ago, Cincinnati upset Penn State, but not today in University Park, Oklahoma State, Nebraska. That's a night game in Lincoln tonight, and it's Nebraska. The, they win it. Huskers over the Cowboys 30-10 in that Big 8 clash. Now in the Cotton Bowl today, it was all Oklahoma. Fred Akers, I don't know if going to have his job at the end of the year, down in Austin, all Oklahoma, Barry Switzer, and he loves to rub it in as they beat Texas 47-12 in the annual Cotton Bowl affair there at the, cotton, at, the, at the fair there in Dallas. Meanwhile, Auburn over Vanderbilt, 31-9. Wisconsin and Iowa, Hawkeyes win it 17-6. Is Hayden Fry on his way to Texas? Who knows? It's going to be an interesting, juicy rumor. We'll see about that one. And Indiana, Ohio State, a great ball game. The undefeated Hoosiers lose to Ohio State. They haven't whipped the Buckeyes since 1952. Indiana keeps losing those guys. And Vic's Irish watch. Watch. What is Lou Holtz doing in South Bend? Lou Holtz lost today to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh wins it 10-9 in South Bend. And finally, Vic Sleeper, Texas Tech, in a coma since Miami. They pull off a shocker today. That's right, in Fayetteville, the Red Raiders of Lubbock stun the hogs of Arkansas, 17-7. to I told you they're going to come awake. One of these days they do today. They're going crazy in Lubbock tonight, shaking up Buddy, Buddy Holly's memories out in Lubbock. Meanwhile, the Giants, the College of the Sequoias at halftime is leading Modesto Junior College. The Sequoias, the giant trees down there, they're up at the half. Whoop! What a day in college football today. Unbelievable. Remember, 14-7 New Mexico State here at the half. Now back to Mike and Don up in the booth. Well, we're going to take a look at the halftime stats, but first, before we do that, I've got to get your comments on the first half. Well, Mike, it's, uh, it's an unbelievable game. Uh, it looks like Coach Mike Knoll is really doing a good job of coaching down there on the sidelines. They started off the Aggies, that is, not really doing much effectively, but they came up with a game plan where they can move the ball by way of pass, even though it be short passes, and they found out a way also to defense uh, the Bulldogs. So the Bulldogs aren't getting away with anything here this evening, but just an excellent job of coaching there on the sidelines, I think, by Coach Mike Knoll. Now, if you look at the halftime stats, and we're about to show them to you, look at one item, yards passing. 
New Mexico State 169, Fresno State 96. Going into this game, you would have thought that certainly would have been reversed. And uh, we've seen this before. We've seen where uh, the Bulldogs get off to a slow start last week in particular, but they can come back, and I expect they will come back. They're much too good a passing ball club, too many good weapons. The word that we get at halftime is that Kevin Sweeney is hurting, but he will be back and he will play. He was taken out, remember, in the closing seconds of the first half in favor of Eric Bouchel. I talked about Coach Mike Knoll doing a good job of coaching down there on the sidelines there in the first half of this game. Coach Jim Sweeney is an excellent coach, too, and you'll see a different ball club, an entirely different ball club out here in the second half of the game. As you well know, up in San Jose last week, we saw them down 24 to nothing and come back to really almost win the game. Let's take a look at some of the highlights now in the first half. This is Jim Miller, the junior quarterback from Roswell, New Mexico, dumping it off to Pat Brown, coming out of the backfield, and Brown has a clear path into the end zone for the first score. Gill kicked the extra point at 7 to nothing, But then the Bulldogs come right back. Kevin Sweeney spots Brock Smith streaking down the sideline, hits him, and Brock makes an over-the-shoulder catch, and it's a touchdown for the Bulldogs, the 62nd touchdown in Kevin Sweeney's four-year career at Fresno State. But the Aggies, although they're tied at this juncture 7-7, come right back. Nothing more than about a five-yard pass to Keith Lott, who is a running back, a converted cornerback, and Lott heads downfield for the touchdown. A Gill kicks the extra point, and that's the way that we have it at halftime. 14-7, Fresno State trailing from the Aggies of New Mexico State. Mike, and I think both of those uh, scores by the Aggies had to be broken plays. Both of them were by backs coming out of the backfield, and both times they went into the end zone with not a bulldog defender within five yards of them. And I'm sure Coach Jim Sweeney is going to get that corrected because that's been the primary offensive weapon in the first half for the Aggies. Jim Sweeney, I think, hit it right on the head at halftime when he said this is a beat-up ball club right now, referring to Fresno State. They've got a tough one, much tougher than expected. New Mexico State here tonight. They've got to get ready for UOP one week away. And the Tigers from Stockton won over UNLV up in Stockton this afternoon. And one good thing about the Aggie Ball Club, when you're having as many problems as they're having this year, you can throw caution to the wind. They've got a lot of people that were excellent yeah, starters yeah. for them this year, didn't even make the trip. So uh, they're throwing caution to the wind, gambling, doing anything, all kinds of reckless things. And you can get away with that for a good while. So for a team that comes in here with four straight losses, New Mexico State has played extremely well in the first half. 14-7 the Aggies as we prepare to go into the second half here at Bulldog Stadium. This game is brought to you by Coors and Coors Light. The beers with the difference worth tasting. Coors to you, Bulldogs. And by Toyota and your Central Valley Toyota dealers. Toyota value and Toyota reliability. Who could ask for anything more? And by Coke. A taste so refreshing, so irresistible, your only choice will be to catch it. Catch the wave. Coke. Who's gonna be at the silver bullet tonight? Give me the news, I can take it. You won, Lou. You won. You won? Hey, they won! Woo! For a for the team! The bullet's first win! Everything. Tell me everything. There's no contest. No contest? I love it. Well, what was the score? Wasn't even close. Whoa, frame a blowout! Oh, you guys are great. The score. Come on, come on. No contest, Luke. The other team never showed up. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. Everybody wants a trouble-free car, but these trouble spots can affect your vehicle and the cost to maintain it. Toyota owners tell a different story. Every year, the leading consumer magazine compares vehicle repairs from almost half a million owners. Once again, owners of Toyota, cars, trucks, and vans reported the fewest repairs, making them the most trouble-free. Better than Nissan, Honda, Chevy. Get more trouble-free driving at your Toyota dealer now. Who can ask for anything more? There's a brand new spirit. What's going on at Merce 76? Spirit. It's a powerful new spirit. Your 76 has a new gasoline. An unleaded premium. The spirit. It's a super 76. 
It's a new kind of spirit, Super 76. Something new, Nick? The highest octane and leaded you can buy. The spirit of 76. It's the spirit of 76. Come and get it. Dear Mr. Davila, I get the best quality and the lowest total tape in the same store, Vons. At Vons, you get Jersey-made quality check dairy products and great weekly specials. Clip this week's newspaper super coupons and get breakfast for six for only 41 cents a person with Vons Large Eggs, one and a half dozen, only 99 cents. Farmer John Pork Links, buy one, get one free, just 69 cents. And don't miss Vons' 80th anniversary sweepstakes. You could win one of 10 American Airline Caribbean vacations for two. Get warehouse prices, no sacrifices. Vons is the more store. Hello again, everybody. Mike Walden and Don Perkins as we start the second half here at Bulldog Stadium. The dogs down 14 to 7. Rossi and uh, Parker are the deep men for New Mexico State. Rossi Humphrey and Todd Parker. Belli's kickoff will be fielded by Rossi Humphrey to the 15. Just across the 20 and put down there. The tackle is made by Brian Greer. And also in there was James Rivera. Quarterback Jimmy Miller there running onto the field, taking some last-minute instructions from Mike Knoll. And the stats on Miller in the first half. 13 out of 21, 169 yards, two touchdowns. He was sacked six times. Kevin Sweeney, 7 out of 20, one interception. He was sacked four times. One touchdown for Sweeney. Penalty markers dropped as the play starts to develop. Probably a procedure call against New Mexico State. That's it. So you'll move from the 20 back to the 15. It appears that John Roberts, number 66, was moving. Yeah, I'll say he was. <laughs> Took a whole lot of people with him, though, once he moved. So it'll be first and 15 for the Aggies. Illegal procedure. Offense, still one. Bob Barrow doesn't waste any words. Still one. Not first down. Still one. So it's first and 15. Still one at the 15. Miller throws out here. Complete to Lott out of the backfield. He gets just uh, about six yards up to the 21. And we have another penalty marker. Cliff Hanneman and Darrell James collaborating on the tackle. In the first half, only four penalties called. A week ago, San Jose State, 36. But now to start the second half, Two penalties. Five meetings between the two schools going back to 1976. And the Fresno State Bulldogs, as we're looking at head coach Jim Sweeney, have won all five of those. Last year, 48 to 21 in the game played in Las Cruces. A personal foul call against Fresno State. That'll cost them 15 and move the ball up to the 31-yard line. First down for New Mexico State. Egan and Langfeld wide to the right. Humphrey wide to the left. It is Lott. Keith Lott stopped around the 35. They will mark his forward progress there. Anthony Nunn, Jay Wilkerson on the stop. Second and 10, the ball at the 31. That shot we had of Jim Sweeney from across the way. Jim seems to be very calm, cool, and collected about matters, even though his team is trailing by seven. I'll bet that was a different Jim Sweeney, though, in the locker room. I, mean, I would like to have heard that speech. Second down and 10, the ball at the 31. It's complete to lot. He's at the 45 and drop there. Tackle made by Darrell James in one of the Bulldogs. A little slow getting up. It was James who made the tackle. They'll be about a yard shy of a first down. Very same passing game that the Aggies were using just before halftime. They've come out here in the second half with the same thing. Number 36 lot coming out of the backfield. It appears that Miller is content to take just the short gains to anybody swinging or flaring out of the backfield. And so far, the Bulldogs have not been able to cover it. Miller riding a hot streak and a hot arm right now. He's completed five in a row. Sims Schroeder out wide along with Benny Thomas to the left side. Miller on the quarterback sneak trying to pick up the first down, and he does. Miller moving straight ahead up to the 47. None leading the defensive surge for Fresno. 
Miller there just behind good blocking Roger Turner the center there primarily blocking a lot of red shirts in there but the Aggies were able to wedge them out Thomas and Langfeld come wide to the left Humphrey wide right lot and Singleton in the backfield for Jim Miller the give is to the tailback lot East cross midfield down in the Fresno territory stopped at the 48. That was a pickup of five yards by Lott. Brian Greer on the tackle. Lott, Second down and five. Lott just came out of the lineup, Mike. Pat Brown went in at tailback. Let's see if he brought a play in. Probably. Benny Thomas is out. And uh, Sadal Langfeld is back in to replace him. Miller. Across the middle to Egan. He has the ball, and Egan is brought down at the 30 of Fresno State. The tackle made by Thomas Ireland. And Miller has been right on target. And the offensive line is doing something tonight for Miller that they certainly were not able to do last week at Utah State. And that is give Miller time to spin up, set up, and throw. Right, they were clobbered last week, and most of the receivers were coming out of the backfield before that one, but Gene Egan is a wide receiver, and that was a nice completion. So the Aggies are in business with a first down at the 31 of Fresno State. This one is complete to Pat Brown. He is pulled down by Daryl James. So he got right around the line of scrimmage. So Miller has misfired on only eight passes tonight, and yet... What a difference a week makes. Against Utah State, Miller was three out of 16 for only 16 yards. And now Miller has his Aggies of New Mexico State leading in the game 14 to seven. We're early in the third quarter. Miller again has time, and now it breaks down. He fumbles the ball recovered by Chris Hanneman. Chris Coast State's ball. Cliff Hanneman on the recovery. The Roverback, a 235-pounder. Greg Ramsey coming in from the blind side on that one. This time quarterback Jimmy Miller, you're going to see him looking to his left. And right at the right of your screen there on his back, number 87. Give a lot of credit, to give all the credit, that is, to Greg Ramsey, the big defensive end right there. Miller doesn't even know he's anywhere around. Let's check the quarterback for Fresno State. It's the familiar number nine. Sweeney pitching back to Williams. He's at the 40. Williams filled at the 42. So a gain of eight by Williams. And it'll be second and two for the dog. To the sidelines and Vic Jacobs. Right before the second half started, Mike and Don, I spoke with Land Jacobs, the defensive coordinator for the Aggies. And I asked if they do anything different against, here than against Utah State. He says, no, but they just have confidence. And confidence can be, confidence can be a dangerous thing. Back to you guys in the booth. Williams trying to get free, kicks his leg free, and now three Aggies get a hold of him and corral it. Leading the charge was Lloyd Bradley. Williams was about to be trapped back of the line, but he was able to kick free and get back close to the line of scrimmage. Not only kick free, but kicked out of his shoe there. One of the things that uh, the Bulldogs have going for them is they've got so many explosive offensive weapons. For the Aggies on the other part, they have to take their time and methodically move downfield. Baker to the left, Taylor to the right on third and four. Mosley up in front of Williams. The give is to Mosley, and he's got a struggle to get to the line of scrimmage. Daryl Ford, Bobby Kinder, Sam Dickey, the linebackers. They had four linebackers, and even Elias Reese had a shot at the ball carrier, Anthony Mosley. So the Bulldogs can't get anything going on offense early in the third quarter, and Barry Belli will punt to Rossi Humphrey. Good snap from Chris Dugan. Penalty marker is dropped. Belli gets away his best kick of the night, sending Rossi all the way back to the 8, picks it up to the 10. Rossi Humphrey to the 20. He's loose. 35, 40, 45, and out of bounds near midfield. How many times do you see that when a guy bobbles a punt or a kickoff, picks it up, and he gets loose for a long gainer? Let's see about the penalty as well. Looking at head coach Mike Knoll there. He's applauding, so evidently the infraction. Illegal procedure. Offense. Decline. 
Well, I should say so. When was the last time you saw an illegal procedure on a punt? We'll take a look at this again. That's one place that the Bulldogs are kind of letting up. That's a couple that have fallen to the ground, and nobody's been right there on top of it by the red shirts, the Bulldogs, because they have let up. And that time it cost them dearly because Humphrey returned it. The Aggies with great field position and leading in the game with 9.45 left in the third quarter. That was a 51-yard punt by Barry Belli and a 39-yard return by Rossi Humphrey. R-O-S-S-I, Rossi Humphrey. From the 48 to give us the Pat Brown. He's to the 50. And Mike Walker on the hit. Mike Walker is a 250-pound senior from Richmond, California. Second down and eight at the 50. For a team, Fresno State, with great scoring potential, it's really got to be a feather in the cap to the Aggie defense, holding Fresno State to only seven points. The Bulldogs were fifth in the nation in scoring, averaging better than 39 a game. Miller in deep trouble this time. Greg Ramsey has it. Greg had six quarterback sacks last year. And if you recall the California Bowl when the Bulldogs ran all over Bowling Green 51-7, Ramsey that day had three quarterback sacks. So the ball, it goes back to the 46. We've had a lot of sacks tonight, haven't we? That's the 40... That is the 40th quarterback sacked by the Bulldogs this season. And we're in the fifth game of the 1986 campaign. Miller is going to go long and deep if he can to Langfeld. He's got it at the 20, out of bounds. Caught the ball, stepped out of bounds at the 24. I'm surprised that Langfeld didn't continue to go. He heard the whistle and stopped almost dead in his tracks. Heard the whistle, caught the ball, then stepped out of bounds. Let's take a look at quarterback Jimmy Miller. Great pass route by Langfeld. Daryl James is just a really off too far to the inside. Langfeld steps out of bounds, but not before a great pickup. No wonder he slowed down. He knew he was out of bounds by a yard or so. So the ball will be spotted down at the 23. First down for the Aggies at the 23 of Fresno State. The Aggies with a 14-7 lead and threatening to get some more. Eight and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Along with Don Perkins, I'm Mike Walden from Bulldog Stadium. Next week, UOP. But that's next week. Right now is the target. That is New Mexico State. Miller, play action fake. He may run. Trying to get out of bounds, and he does. And uh, the head linesman trying to get out of the way of Miller. Miller almost bowled him over. And look who's in the game. Number five, Michael Stewart. Injury and all, Stewart is in the game at his familiar strong safety spot. Tell you what, and they can use uh, Stewart, too, because he's an excellent one. Makes a lot of tackles right up on the line of scrimmage. Watch Stewart coming up there. There's Miller, and look at the linesman there. He knows where his safety is. A loss of third, or rather a loss of three, setting up a second and 13. Miller is going to be sacked. Jeff Rowe Franklin gets his first scalp of the night. Big Jethro from San Jose with some help from Greg Ramsey. Leads the team in sacks. We haven't heard much of him tonight. Didn't hear much of him last week, but Jethro Franklin, number 767, uh, made his presence known on that play. So he set up a third and 17 for the Aggies. The Bulldogs have sacked Miller nine times. Yet the Aggies are on top, 14 to seven. Miller throws one up that is caught by Rossi Humphrey, but he caught it out of bounds. Maybe he didn't have possession either. He did have it for a step or two, but he was out of bounds. Fred Wilburn covering for the dogs. And Fred really had good position on him that time. Miller threw the pass, the only place that he could. Almost a great reception that time. Like I said, number eight, Fred Wilburn doing everything he can right position. There will be no field goal attempt here. Aldez is in the punt. Belli would try a field goal, but he has great range, and he's an outstanding kicker. So the Aggies are going to punt. Aldez aiming for the sideline boundaries, and a nice job by Aldez. He punted out of bounds around the 15-yard line. 
So the Bulldogs will have a first down from their 15 when we come back with seven and a half minutes left third quarter. As a leader in multi-user technology, MicroAge brings you the leading multi-user systems, like this Alto system, allowing your staff to share information and resources. At MicroAge, we understand the technology of today's multi-user systems, and we understand business needs. So we can explain exactly what this technology can do for you and your office. When you're looking for a business system, come to MicroAge. We offer more than computers. We provide solutions. Have you ever wanted to own a beautiful oriental rug? Well, right now, Kirkwood's is having a spectacular sale. Because Kirkwood's is dealing direct with one family of importers, we can offer you low prices on these unique rugs. We've assembled a collection of magnificent hand-knotted wool and silk rugs from Pakistan, featuring some of the most beautiful designs and patterns. Even little ones adore the look and feel of these rugs. Come to Kirkwood's and we'll help you find a carpet you'll be sure to enjoy. Kirkwood's Design Gallery, Cedar Clinton in Fresno. The proud Fresno State defense, who was punctured for 45 points by San Jose State last week, still has not given up any points in the third quarter. It looked like the Aggies were going to get in, but then the Bulldogs were able to stiffen and take over. And now, was there a fumble or not? The Aggies say yes, the officials say no. I think that's that little shovel pass that Sweeney uses, and the Aggies wanted to call it a fumble, but it is a forward pass, regardless of how you get the ball in the forward motion. Well, here is a team, Fresno State, ranked number one in the nation in passing, 335 yards, struggling to get over 100 yards in passing in this game. Seven and a half minutes left, 14 to seven New Mexico State, and Sweeney throws it to the shoe of Mosley. That's twice now tonight that Kevin Sweeney has misfired on the screen pass out in the flats. But the Aggies have been able to apply good pressure on Kevin Sweeney. You're going to see coming in on the left of the screen there, that's where the pressure comes from. Mike Williams putting a lot of pressure on him. When you got that kind of pressure, it's hard to find a receiver. Sweeney has felt the stings and arrows of uh, Mike Williams and Joe Campbell most of this night. Now from the shotgun, Sweeney dumps this one off, mostly juggles, starts upfield to the 15. And dumped down hard at the 18. Bobby Kinder was in there with help from Craig Thompson. But again, the offense cannot get on track. And you have to give credit where credit is due the New Mexico State defense. Defensive line doing an excellent job. They're beating the offensive front set for the Bulldogs at this point. Barry Belli standing back in his own five, ready to punt. Rossi Humphrey is back to the 36 of New Mexico State, awaiting Belli's punt. Making the snap, Chris Dugan. Their catch is signal four, and the ball is taken by Ed Russell. Ed Russell was the up man, and that punt traveled only 34 yards. Now, the Aggies on top, 14 to 7, have the ball almost at midfield. Their own 48, and again, great field position, a great opportunity for New Mexico State. Head coach Mike Knoll along the sidelines. The Aggies are not an explosive offensive ball club. They're going to play it very close to the vest. Knoll looks young, doesn't he? He 34. is. 34 years old. His first year at New Mexico State. Miller running across the 50 down into Fresno territory, dropped by linebacker Jay Wilkerson. I think Miller was upset with himself. He thought he might have more running room. I think he's upset at himself because he got tripped up by that little white line out there. I don't think anybody really touched him. He got his feet kind of crossed and went down. Ball is at the 49 of Fresno State. Humphrey to the right side. And Langfeld and Thomas to the left. Oh, mix up on the snap from center. The Bulldogs claim they have the ball, and indeed they do at the 49. Jethro Franklin falling on the ball for the Bulldogs. And now the Aggies are their own worst enemy. Today's game is brought to you in part by Burger King. This is a Burger King town. We know how burgers should be. This 
decisions, decisions. Should you stop for a McDLT or should you stop for a Whopper? The McDLT is fried, so it tastes, well, fried. The Whopper is flame broiled to taste more like a backyard barbecue. The McDLT is the one they'd rather serve their way. The Whopper is fixed your way to your taste, all of which should make your basic decision very simple. This is a Burger King town. We know how burgers should be. Sun goes down. Did you see that? See what? Yeah. What? So where are we going anyway? What are you asking me for? It's your town, pal. That's my song. My town. Hey, I'm everywhere, pal. Knock it off, Glenn. Remember that old line, we have meant the enemy and they are us? <laughs> That's what the Aggies are going to be saying of themselves. Four turnovers in this game, and that club has been averaging four turnovers per game. Kelly Skipper getting loose as he moves down to the 46 of the Aggies. Ed Russell on the tackle. Four turnovers by New Mexico State. We haven't heard much from Kelly Skipper in recent games. We sure haven't, but the reason we haven't is because James Williams, the, the back that he comes in for, has been doing an outstanding job. I mentioned earlier, last week went for 141 and a losing call. Only one wide receiver now, and that's Gene Taylor wide to the left side. Flug is the tight end on the right side. The give is to Kelly Skipper, and he plows his way to the 41. The little guy has a low point of gravity, and Kelly Skipper... Moves the ball down to the 41. Tackled by Reese. Kelly Skipper, 5'6", 181. And he's got a first down. Take a look at it again. Little man with the low center of gravity there. Run with a lot of pressure. Just bowled over Elias Ruiz, number 49. Brooks and Skipper. Kelly Brooks. Skipper, here comes Skipper at the 45, and they throw him for a loss. Dropped it around the 43. I think they had some sort of a play set up there, but Steve Markey came over there to pour the pads to Skipper. Four minutes and 46 seconds left in the third quarter, and Mike Noel of New Mexico State has the lead, 14 to 7. American League Baseball in the 11th inning, the Red Sox and the California Angels are all tied up, three apiece. And here at Fresno in college football, PCAA action, New Mexico State 14, and the Bulldogs 7. On second down, Sweeney completes this to Gene Taylor. Taylor gets to the 34. One thing the Aggies have been able to do tonight, contain Stephen Baker, who's playing with a bad back, and Gene and Taylor. Gene Taylor. Taylor, the number one receiver, with 17 catches for 248 yards, but he's been... Like I said, silence this evening. It's the first catch in the game for Gene Taylor. And although they've gone to Stephen Baker a couple of times, the little guy has yet to catch one. So you figure he is due. The pitch to Kelly Skipper. 25. Skipper with a stutter step down to the 23. Todd Parker, the cornerback, brought him down. A run of 11 yards by Kelly Skipper and another first down for Fresno State. And you saw what he get, did against the Aggies last year. Give a lot of credit to Todd Parker, though. He did a great job with an open field tackle that time on Skipper. And give credit, too, to the Fresno State center, Brian Fallon, for a key block. So now the Bulldogs have the ball down at the 23 of New Mexico State. They will go out of the eye with the tailback, Kelly Skipper. A fake handoff to Brooks. I guess it was a fake or a misplay. And... It's Mike Williams dragging down Kevin Sweeney. Did you notice Don Perkins? It appeared that he wanted to hand off to Kelly Brooks or something happened. Had to be a broken play. He and Kelly Skipper ended up running in the same direction and that doesn't happen because Skipper wasn't serving as a decoy or a blocker. He was just kind of out there in the way. Ball goes back to the 26 now. A loss of four, so it'll be second and almost 13. Fake to Kelly Skipper. 
Devin Cooney in trouble again, scrambling around and is thrown down at the 33. Lenny Moore, the defensive tackle from Bakersfield. And Kevin is holding on to his left leg. Kevin Sweeney took a pounding at San Jose State, has taken his licks tonight at home against New Mexico State. Somebody needs to stop or slow down that defensive front uh, for the Aggies coming in there like that. There's a look at the quarterback sacks. Fresno State has nine. New Mexico State, five. Now on third and 21, three wide receivers, Baker, Taylor, and Smith. Baker is on the right side. The other two on the opposite flank. From the shotgun, Kevin Sweeney is going to go for Stephen Baker. And uh, there might have been interference. Yep. Penalty marker goes down. And the interference call will be on Lloyd Bradley, the left cornerback. It appeared that Bradley made contact with the ball still in the air and almost tackled a Baker about two yards deep in the end zone. He's walking all over the heels of number right there. Right there, you can see him tripping Baker with his feet. And actually, he's impeding Baker's rights to go for the ball. Right there, Baker has him beat. And Bradley comes in, trips him up. That'll be a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. That'll move the ball to the 22. So the Bulldogs get a break. Chris Dugan is in at tight end. And Taylor goes out. Had Bradley not interfered, though, Baker surely would have gone in for the TD. Unless he dropped it, and he doesn't do that very often. The two tight ends are Dugan and Flug. Kelly Skipper is the tailback. In motion, Stephen Baker. The pitch to Kelly Skipper at the 20. The 15, the 10. Baker is pulled out at the 10 yarder. Whether uh, Kelly Skipper pulled out at the 10. It's Todd Parker making the tackle. A lot of red shirts out uh, helping Kelly Skipper this time, but you're going to see a lot of quickness there. Right there, he cuts inside one man, burst to the outside, finally brought down by Perk. And a good block, too, leading the way, fullback Anthony Mosley. A minute and a half left in the third quarter. Introducing the new Apple IIGS personal computer, the most powerful Apple II yet. It has a 16-bit microprocessor, 256K of memory, 7 expansion slots, 7 peripheral ports, and that's just for starters. The Apple IIGS has two new graphics modes offering over 4,000 different colors. Also, a sound chip that lets you compose and play up to 15 different instruments at one time. Available at Fresno's oldest computer specialty store, Online Computers Plus, Blackstone and Herndon. Made the tackle, it'll be first and goal to go from the New Mexico State one. Todd Parker has had to be the man on the spot for a number of times tonight. This time he's the last man to keep Kelly Skipper from going into the end zone there. Todd Parker making the stop and a nice gain by Skipper. And while we were away on commercial, Bobby Kinder, who is the excellent middle linebacker of New Mexico State, was helped off the field. And if Kinder is not available, that will really hurt the Aggies. The give is to Williams. Touchdown, Fresno State. There you're looking at the little fella, Kelly Skipper. He did most of the work going downfield, and he was the one that got the honors there to carry it in for the touchdown. The little fella, only 5'6". Let's take a look at it from ground level. You're going to see him right there going in the air, being met by number 55, Daryl Ford, but Skipper punches in. My apologies. I thought it was Williams, and it was Kelly Skipper for the touchdown. Jenkins to hold. Belli to kick. Good. Fresno State, New Mexico State tied at 14 with a minute left in the third quarter. going on at Merce 76. Spirit, it's a powerful new spirit. Merce 76 has a new gasoline. An unleaded premium. The spirit, it's of Super 76. It's a new kind of spirit, Super 76. Something new, Nick? The highest octane unleaded you can buy. The spirit of 76. The spirit, the spirit of 76. I'm gonna get it.
Well, New Mexico State took a 7 to nothing lead. Fresno State caught up. New Mexico State went right back on top, 14 to 7, and that was it at halftime. And now Fresno State, for the second time this evening, has caught up again. 14 apiece. Rossi Humphrey and Todd Parker awaiting the kickoff from the 35-yard line by Barry Bella. And Mike, it's as close as that American League playoff game. If anybody's tempted to turn, don't do it. The California beat Boston 4 to 3. That's the final. Rossi from the 7. Up to about the 22, and a penalty marker is thrown into the pileup. Daryl James made the tackle. And it's Rossi Humphrey who's extending his left leg. Might have been a cramp or he might have, took, uh, might have uh, taken a lick around the left kneecap. An official's timeout now while the New Mexico State trainer is out attending to Rossi Humphrey. We have 58 seconds left in this third quarter. Fresno State and the Aggies of New Mexico State deadlocked at 14. What was the score in that baseball game? I think it went 13 innings, but the California Angels beat the Red Sox 4-3, to three, Mike. So the Angels are just one victory away. Clip. Not quite Under 13, but it did go Get 11 off, innings. And right, they're only one, one away. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but regardless, it'll be a first down at the 11. And a reminder once again, following this game, the Century Valley Toyota dealers will present tonight's inspirational award to the player whose outstanding performance in this game will earn him the special honor. It's a clipping penalty. That was the call. Let's take a look at Rossi Humphrey there, the return man on this one. And there's the clip right there. Where? <laughs> the you blur, there the blur going the other direction, oh. the white shirt in the back of the red shirt. I've huh? always had problems with blurs. <laughs> 14-14, and it appears that the record of Fresno State never being scored upon in the third quarter will hold up for another game. We have only 58 seconds left in this third period. Fresno fans applauding Rossi Humphrey, who's helped off the field. Williamson, Stewart, Wilburn, and Harris in the secondary for Fresno State. Egan wide to the right side. Miller with the handoff to Bocox. And Roger Bocox gets nowhere. John O'Leary closed down on him at the 14. And if the Aggies get any points out of this drive, it'll be an 89-yard drive. And the way the Aggies move the football offensively, that could take about a week. Mike Noel sends in a play for the Aggies, taking Langfeld out and putting Paul Schroeder, a wide receiver, in his spot. Schroeder goes wide to the right side. Second and eight from the 13. Miller throws on the run incomplete. He was going for his running back, Roger Bocox. Anthony Nunn right in the face of Jim Miller. A lot of backs have been catching the ball coming out of the backfield for the Aggies here this evening, but Bocox is not one of them. I think that's the first attempt to him by Miller. And now Shorter will come out. Langfelt will bring in the play from the bench. Egan to the right. Benny Thomas, Langfelt to the left. Third down and eight from the 13. Caught by Lott. He's out of bounds at the 21. Greg Williamson bouncing him out. And it's going to be... Very close to a first down. It depends on where the officials spot the ball, of course. Lot coming out of the backfield. That's where the number one receivers have been coming for the Aggies all afternoon. No pass rush at all, though, by the Bulldogs. He had to get to the 22. It looked like he went out of bounds around the 21 from the replay angle. And they're going to bring in the chain gang from the far side for a measurement. We have eight seconds left in this third quarter. Next week, UOP, Fresno State, 7 o'clock here at Bulldog Stadium. And he counted the ball, remember? Just missed. Oh, was that close. You heard that roar from the crowd. That's because the score was just given in that California Angel-Boston Red Sox game. And that's where we are in California. 
as quarterback, Jimmy Miller, going to his receiver, a lot coming out in the backfield right there. Greg Williamson, the cornerback, coming up to make the stop. And a sure stop it was, yeah, it was by the one. young man from Millican High School in Long Beach. He knew he had to prevent his man from getting the first down, and he did by inches. And giving away 40 pounds to a guy with a running start. Williamson checks in at 184 pounds at 5'11". So now it's fourth and one, so what will the Aggies do? I don't see the putter out there. He is not. They're going to go for it. The game tied, 14 apiece. Oh, they won't even get the playoff. That's the end of the third quarter. So once again, for the fifth straight time this season, the Bulldogs have not allowed an opponent to score in the third period. We are deadlocked. You really want to appreciate the Coors difference. Less heavy, easy drinking. Try spending some time doing this. Oh, yeah. Coors is the one. Looking out for number one. Looking out for number one. Toyota, looking out for you with a Toyota 4x4 Turbo. The only gas turbo. The turbo tough enough to take you where you want to go. Looking out for number one. Looking out for you has made Toyota number one in compact truck sales and number one in truck satisfaction. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota! The Bulldogs like to think that the fourth quarter belongs to Fresno State. It did up until the final 52 seconds at San Jose last week. Meanwhile, as the Bulldogs were holding up four fingers, signifying the fourth quarter is ours, New Mexico State players on the opposite side did the same thing. Again, a measurement has been requested, and it is placed down, and the ball is just inches shy of the first down, and the Aggies will go for it. The ball just across the 21, their own 21. A 14-14 tie. Let's check out the defense now. Fresno State. Michael Stewart is in there. Greg Ramsey. Mark Olson. Jethro Franklin. Fred Wilburn. Anthony Nunn. I would guess a quarterback sneak by Jim Miller. It is. And it appears that he has it. But we will await for the official. Yep, there's the signal by the referee, Bob Barrow. He only had a couple of inches. Didn't have far to go. He gets a good block, though, from his center. Roger Turner there doing a good job. Just wedging him out a little bit. Give Miller just a, a shoulder to stick his head in there. Were you surprised that they would go for it on the first play of the fourth quarter, tied at 14? Not really. I, I think they've thrown caution to the wind. They're going to gamble any way they possibly can to win. First down, New Mexico State from their 22. Miller sets up the throw. The pass is caught by Roger Bocox and Anthony Nunn made the tackle. Bocox gets the ball to the 26, so a pickup of four. Second and six, New Mexico State. We haven't seen the Singleton, Anthony Singleton, the fullback much in the second half. He started the game along with Keith Lott in the backfield with Jim Miller. Bocox and Lott are the running backs. He might have had some movement on the offensive line. Penalty markers are dropped all over. I think in the offensive backfield, it looked like number 36, Keith Lott, was lunging forward there. We're going to get another look at it. But Lott, look I'll say. <laughs> so, whoops. Looked like he was in a starting block, ready to beat the official gun. I think another reason that the Aggies went for it on fourth yardage is they know that the, the Bulldogs are very explosive offensively, and anything they can do to keep the ball out of their hands, I think uh, Coach Mike Knoll is going to do. New Mexico State, a team that came in here with four straight defeats and seven straight road defeats, and they played the Bulldogs to a 14-14 standstill. 14 minutes left in the game. Miller's pass no good. And penalty marker is dropped. It looks like pass interference against John O'Leary. 
I think that was probably a good call to uh, O'Leary's on the defense that time, but uh, let's take a look at it off to the left here. You're going to see him go right on the back of number 36, Lott, who was trying to make the catch. Defensive pass interference, first down. So that'll give the Aggies a first down at the 23. 14-14. The game relatively free of penalties. And you've had only 10 and you had 36 last week. It is relatively free. Langfeld and Benny Thomas go to the left side. Shorter to the right side. Miller pumps once, comes back the other way. To the 30. Out of bounds near the 34. And again, penalty markers dropped all over the place. I think we're going to get a clip on this one, but uh, I, I'm guessing. But I think number 18, Benny Thomas, trying to help out quarterback Miller that time. Take a look at it. Miller there, scrambling out to his right. All by him safe there, uh, self there. But right there was Benny Thomas, and I think he's the one they caught. One week from tonight... It'll be UOP and Fresno State here at Bulldog Stadium. And the Tigers, in case you're just joining us, won today over UNLV. Let's see if we can pick up Bob Barrow, the referee from Salt Lake. Clip on the offense. Still first. Clip called against Benny Thomas. Miller has 37 yards rushing and a minus... 38 yards for all of his sacks. He all the times he's been sacked tonight. First down for New Mexico State. The inside handoff to Keith Lott. Nothing at all there. And the Fresno State defense is getting mighty tough now. John Carippo on the bottom of the pile. Hanneman, Wilburn, Nunn, Tony Harris, Franklin, all talking it up on defense, along with John Carippo. Second and 15 for New Mexico State. Jim Miller, under heavy pressure, has to get rid of it in a hurry, completes the pass, but it'll be for a yard loss. Bocox made the grab, but he was cut in two by Anthony Nunn. Big play coming up now for the Aggies from New Mexico State. They don't make convert on this. They're going to have to kick. There's the throw by by quarterback Miller out into the flat. And there's Anthony Nunn doing his number. Great linebacker for As the Bulldogs. The wave starts to unfurl here at Bulldog Stadium. According to the New Mexico State trainer, that fine linebacker, Bobby Kinder, has a slight knee strain, probably will return. Miller goes down. The sack. Credited to Greg Ramsey. Greg Ramsey, a 252-pound senior. And he gets a hug from Mike Waffle, the defensive coach. Here's a fake. And the punter all does is hit and drop that through 12. I'm not sure if it was a planned fake or whether Aldez just decided to take off in his own because he saw the penetration. Scott Duarte made the tackle on Aldez. Whatever it was, it backfired. Let's take a look at it again. No, I don't think it was really a plan, Bake. He had no chance of kicking it without it getting blocked that time. Well, the snap from Steve Markey was high. Aggie's in a heap of trouble. Oh, I mean to tell you. Fresno State takes over in their 13. Here comes a little guy, Kelly Skipper. And he gets inside the 10, stopped at the 8 by John McGuff, the defensive end. 14-14 tie. We have almost 12 minutes left in this one. And Bobby Kinder, the fine middle linebacker of New Mexico State, is back on defense for the Aggies. The Bulldogs have sacked Miller 10 times tonight. Ramsey has three of those. Gipper trying to get away. Not so this time. He is pulled down by Lloyd Bradley. Back at the 12. That often surprises people when a defensive back comes up and makes a tackle on the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. That time Bradley 
did just that. Rock Skipper down in the backfield, but they force runs, and they have to be up on the line of scrimmage. They're expected to make tackles there. A further report now from the New Mexico State bench. Rossi Humphrey, as a foot sprain, will not return to the game. From the 13-yard line of New Mexico State, Kevin Sweeney sets up, dumps it off to Mosley. Mosley's at the 10, trying to get loose. He's at the 5, down he goes. Anthony Mosley. The hit applied to Mosley by linebacker Sam Dickey. Just a great effort that time on the part of Mosley. Sweeney tossed it to him out there in the flat, and he really had a lot of white shirts around him. Take a look at it again. You're going to see the white shirts converge on number 37. Right there, he dodges one. There's a bunch more after him. He's still running out of tackle, still moving upfield, steps away from another tackle. Good run that time by Mosley. But he's two yards shy of a first down, so a field goal attempt from the 12 by Barry Belli. And Belli boots this one home, sending Fresno State into its first lead in this game. The 22-yard field goal by Barry Belli, and it's a three-point lead for the Bulldogs. Sea of Choices rises a new wave of taste so refreshing nothing else comes close. Catch the wave. Coke. In this confusing maze of car buying, there's really only one dealership. Century Ford. Century Ford, your regional Ford dealer, is the number one Ford dealer in the Valley. A five-star dealership with the Valley's largest selection of new cars and trucks. And during our incredible deal of the Century sales event, you'll see the car you want at the hottest price of this century. The payments are right, and we're open till 10 tonight. Get a Ford car, truck, or van, day or night, during Century Ford's Deal of the Century sales event. Hurry and be there early. <laughs> Bobby Cox will drop back deep along with Todd Parker, awaiting the kickoff by Barry Bella as the Bulldogs have finally taken the lead with 10 minutes to play. Going to be Parker, Parker at the 15. And Parker moves up to about the 16, 17-yard line. Mike Knoll four years ago was an assistant on the New Mexico State staff. They decided to make a change. He wanted to become the head coach. The job went to Fred Zeckman. He left New Mexico State, went to join Jim Johnson down at the University of Miami. He finished second to Zeckman. Zeckman was then fired after last season. Noel applied again, got the job. A success story for Mike Noel, who, by the way, is a native of Marshalltown, Iowa. 17-14. Here comes Pat Brown. Pat Brown from Pacifica, California, gets a couple. Cliff Hanneman on the tackle. It'll be kind of interesting to see if the Aggies change their game plan. They really don't have a big game-breaking kind of offense, so I, I would imagine they'll methodically move it and march it down here. If they can but they've been handicapped by four turnovers. Or else they might have uh, been on top. Pass no good to Thomas. Miller across the middle to Thomas. And guarding on the play was Thomas Ireland. Mike, you know, on a couple of those turnovers are kind of inexcusable. Just the snap, uh, the snap between the center, Roger Turner and his quarterback, Jim Miller, that they didn't connect on. And the Bulldogs were able to recover. In case you're just joining us on the telecast, Barry Belli has missed field goals tonight from 40 yards out and 59 yards. He just hit a 22-yarder to put the Bulldogs on top, 17-14. Miller will load it up again if he can, but he can't. Another sack. This one chucked up to Mark Olson, the senior from Santa Barbara. That is the 11th Fresno State sack of Jim Miller. 11 sacks. Well, they were averaging about 10 a game, and uh, they're going to keep up with that average tonight. Well, they're going to go over it. Yeah. 
Here is the punt by Aldez. No fake or anything like that this time. Baker has the ball at the 39, retreats all the way to the 33, and is pulled down by Joe Campbell. Boy, he's got good speed for a guy 6'4 and 250. Last year, an independent firm surveyed over 30,000 new car owners regarding the initial quality of their cars. 143 models were ranked, representing 29 manufacturers. As you might expect, Mercedes-Benz did very well, with two models in the top ten. However, Toyota finished first, with six models in the top ten, including the first, second, third, and fourth place winners. See the winning quality for yourself at your Toyota dealers today. Who's gonna be at the silver bullet this is tonight? This the girl with the gray jacket. You told him it was from me. I thought I was doing you a favor. Uh, I want to be <sighs> invisible. Kelly, you're a friend of mine. He's a friend of mine. I can't believe it. Look, I'll buy you guys a couple of Coors Lights. We'll forget it ever happened, okay? But, Rob, just tell me something. What did he say? He said thanks. <laughs> There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. Mike Walden and Don Perkins, the Bulldogs lead at 17-14. The Bulldogs have sacked Jim Miller 11 times. Conversely, the Aggies have sacked Kevin Sweeney five times. So the pressure on Sweeney, and they have taken away two of Fresno State's favorite weapons, Stephen Baker and Gene Taylor. Taylor has caught only one ball. Baker has been shut out to this point. 8.53 to play. Williams and Mosley, the running back, split backs. It is Williams. Tackle by John McGuff. Considering that New Mexico State had allowed an average of 43 points a game in their last four losses, it's got to be kind of a moral victory right now for New Mexico State to hold the Bulldogs to a lead of only 17-14. It's just 17 points. Mike. Remember, Fresno State came in averaging 39 points a game, number five in the nation. What were you seeing, Don? Mike Knoll has done an excellent job of juggling. There's a lot of people that were starters last week or even on this trip. And speaking of juggling, that was quite an act by Anthony Mosley. That little play has not worked at all tonight for the Bulldogs. One week, Mosley picked off about 11 passes. It's the leading receiver for the Bulldogs, but this one just a little bit too high and hot to handle. A little over eight minutes left. Bulldog 17, New Mexico State 14. Two tight ends for Jim Sweeney's team, Paul Flug and Chris Dugan. Only one wide receiver. That is Taylor. He's going to go to Taylor if he can. The ball gets to him on the first hop. That is not like Kevin Sweeney. He gets the ball to you when he's healthy. But he's playing hurt and having difficulty and getting a lot of pressure from the Aggies. Head coach Jim Sweeney, he knows Kevin took quite a beating up at San Jose last week and was roughed up a little bit in the first half of this game. It's Dave Bass in punt formation, not Barry Bella. It is Bass. He drives this one pretty good. Fair catch is signal for. And it is gathered in there by Ed Russell. So the Aggies will take over from their own 32. Down by three points, but still a lot of time left. Eight minutes to be exact. And good field position, too, with the ball on their own 32, 32 and a half yard line. Quarterback Jimmy Miller there calling the signals for the Aggies, one and five for the year. Miller is hit on 21 out of 32, but he's been sacked 11 times. Hits on this one to Anthony Singleton. Singleton gets into Fresno State territory to the Bulldog 46. Anthony Singleton, a product from Hamilton High School in Los Angeles. I saw him limping around there coming back to the huddle. He did come out of the lineup. In the lineup is number 37, Linefeld for him. Nice pass that time by Miller. He's got a variety of ways of throwing, side arm, underhand, whatever. Just looking, trying to get it to his receivers. The Aggies with a first down at the Fresno State 46. The give is to Roger Bocock. Not much there as he tries to slant between left guard and left tackle. They'll give him one yard to the 47. Franklin and Greer collaborating. Second and nine. 
This is the seventh game for New Mexico State. Do you realize that after this one tonight, the Aggies have only four games left in the season? Time flies when you're having fun. Well, the Aggies are having fun tonight. Giving Fresno State all the Bulldogs could ask for. A collision between Egan and Wilburn. No penalty markers dropped. Gene Egan and Fred Wilburn. Good coverage that time by Wilburn. You see Egan there trying to make the reception. Actually, he had Wilburn beat a little bit, but the pass was a little bit underthrown. I think we're going to see four downs from now on by the Aggies. I don't think they're going to attempt a field goal or put the ball in the air by way of punt. Well, they've got to get the ball inside the 30s for him to have a chance at a field goal from the kicker, Jim Gill. And that is an incompleted pass to Roger Bocock. He must have heard the footsteps of Anthony Nunn because he took quite a lick as he went up for the ball. Roger Bocock, the intended receiver on this one. Jimmy Miller having a little bit of time to throw right there and through the hands of Bocock. Gary Aldez ready to punt. Stephen Baker is deep. Hey, Aldez is going to throw a pass. It's up in the air. Can Baker make the catch? He does. At the 10. Baker to the 20. And Baker to the 30. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That was almost like a punt. Gary Aldez throwing a pass and Baker making the interception. Well, I'm glad they threw this one because I was expecting or already said they would not punt. At that time, Aldez throwing. He's trying to hit downfield for David Ryder. Ryder. But Baker there doing a circus job, juggling a little bit, but comes up with the big interception. The way Baker was carrying the ball reminds me of Wendell Tyler when he was with UCLA, now of course with the San Francisco 49ers, holding it out in front with one hand. Here comes James Williams. Williams picks up some tough yardage at the 34. Bobby Kender on the tackle with help from John McGuff. We're down to the final 6.45. This game, folks, is still up for grabs. Sure, the Bulldogs are on top, 17-14, but only by 17-14. A lot of people expected a, a route here tonight. It has not been that. 17-14. James Williams trying to pick up the first down, but he's going to be shy about three, four yards. Bobby Kinder made the tackle. Bulldogs. Kinder has been in on so many plays tonight. Certainly has. Bulldogs have a lot of big guns, but... Uh... They're trying to get out of this one with a win. And with a 17-14 lead, they're going to play it close to the vest. Look for a very conservative Fresno State Bulldog offensive ball club. Next Saturday night, the Aggies of New Mexico State will take on Long Beach in Las Cruces. Long Beach beat Fullerton tonight, 30-20. to Long Beach comes in here the Bulldog Stadium in a couple of weeks. Going long, it's three, and uh, it's going to be... Intercepted all right, but it was intercepted out of bounds. Ed Russell, or Parker, it was Parker who made the catch out of bounds, but there was nowhere, there wasn't a receiver within 35 yards. Well, Stephen Baker was the intended receiver on that one, Mike, but he and Craig Thompson bumped each other about 20 yards. There's Coach Jim Sweeney expressing his disgust. But Thompson and uh, Baker collided about 20 yards before that, and Baker went down to the turf. Lloyd Bradley is awaiting the punt of Barry Belli. Good snap from Chris Dugan. Belli delivers. Bradley has the ball at the 29. Looked like he was circling a fly ball in center field and had to go down to his knees to make the grab. New Mexico State will take over with a first down from their 29. And we're down to the final 535 of this one. Bulldogs leading on a 22-yard field goal by Barry Belli, 17-14. Shorter to the left side, along with Benny Thomas. Egan to the right. Miller throwing on the run. It's almost kicked off. He was going to Singleton out of the backfield, and Cliff Hanneman almost had the interception. 
Miller did a good job of getting that one off, intended for Singleton, but uh, almost intercepted. Let's take a look at it again. You're going to see that. There it is, just a little sidearm throw around the defense that time, and nearly picked off by number 77, Hanneman. Miller seems to throw a very soft pass. Doesn't have a lot of zip to it, but he's been effective. Williamson, Stewart, Wilburn, Harris in the secondary. It's second and ten. Miller will go this time to Egan, and he overthrows him. Egan stopped at about the 45, and the ball was up in the air then. And either he ran the wrong pattern, or Miller threw it too far. And I think Egan ran the wrong pattern. Fred Wilburn had his number all the way down. As with Jimmy Miller there, he's kind of kind of going sideways there. 22 completions and 37 attempts for 261 and two TDs. Who would have thought he would have been throwing for more completions than Kevin Sweeney here this evening? No one coming in, but those are the facts, and that's what's happened. Thomas, along with Schroeder to the left side. Miller dumps this one off to Singleton out of the backfield, and he steps out of bounds at the 34. Singleton out of bounds after a five-yard pickup. It'll be fourth and five. Gallant effort this time by Singleton to stay in bounds there. If he could have stayed in bounds, he could have picked up much more yardage. Right there, he beats Anthony Nunn, but he can't get away from that white chalk line. Aldez to punt, and this time he does. It's a high spiral punt. Baker backs up to the 17. Tries to get some blocking up, and he's getting out of real estate. Now, penalty marker goes down, and somebody's got him by the foot, and that's Joe Campbell. Joe Campbell who checks in at uh, 6'4 and 240 or so, had the little guy, Stephen Baker, a 172-pounder by one foot. Maybe you can see Chris Dugan, number 84, right there. No, that's not Chris Dugan. That's another uh, block being thrown. But Chris Dugan, number 84, I think, threw a clip back there for the Bulldogs. When Campbell grabbed the foot, I was thinking of the old line, make a whoosh. <laughs> And the walk-off now against the Bulldogs. Well, if you're going to run out the clock, you'll have a lot of time Army to do offense. it. First down. Our thanks to those assisting us on the telecast tonight. Mitch Reinhardt, John Loyacano, and Mike Wise. Director, producer, Howard Zuckerman handling the graphics. Jerry Cole. Five minutes left, 17-14. The Bulldogs lead it on a 22-yard field goal by Barry Belli. Two tight ends, Flug and Dugan. It's Williams into the middle. And four Aggies shoving back. Leading the defensive charge, Bobby Ante and Bobby Kinder. Well, it's a little difficult now if you're trying to run out the clock. Mike Noel realizes that his team is down by three. 4.48 left. And we have a timeout call because Jim Williams is down. In this whole wide world, there's one spectacular taste. You just can't pass up. Pepsi choice of a new generation. And for great Pepsi taste without caffeine, there's Pepsi Free, the caffeine-free choice of a new generation. Decisions, decisions. Should you stop for a McDLT or should you stop for a Whopper? The McDLT is fried, so it tastes, well, fried. The Whopper is flame broiled to taste more like a backyard barbecue. The McDLT is the one they'd rather serve their way. The Whopper is fixed your way to your taste all of which should make your basic decision very simple. This is a Burger King town. We know how burgers should be. James Williams walking off the field ever so slowly, replaced by Kelly Skipper. Mosley and Skipper, the running backs out of the eye, the pitch to Kelly. Skipper at the 10, the 15. Down he goes hard at the 17-yard line. Kelly Skipper bursting through there with a nice seven-yard run and a good block by Mike Withicum, a 284-pound offensive tackle. Mike Williams finally got Skipper down. Ten carries for 44 yards so far this evening. 
He just explodes through there on this one. Gets good blocking out to the side. Another good block by Dugan. He's got a lot of heat on him right now because I don't believe that Williams can come back and Kelly Skipper's going to have to carry the load as the ball carrier. Still a lot of time left. Over four minutes. James Williams is in at one of the flankers. This is the receiver. Not the running back, James Williams. Kelly Skipper gets to about the 18. And Mike Williams is there to meet him and drop him. So it's 17-14, Bulldogs under four minutes left as you look at the Bulldogs huddling back at around the 12. Mike Witham and Mike Chulansif on the left side along with Chris Dugan. Taylor goes wide to the left. The pitch again to Kelly Skipper to the 20. Kelly Skipper up to the 24. He has to get to the 27 to get a first down. John McGuff on the tackle. So now it'll be third down and two or three yards, depending on where they spot the ball. Kelly Skipper has rushed 12 times for 52 yards. It'll be third and about two and a half. The clock continues to move. The clock is down to three minutes. Three minutes left. Skipper and Mosley, the running backs. It's Kelly Skipper again. Skipper's got the first down. He's up to the 28. He had to go to the 27. Got an extra yard before Bobby Kinder could put him down. And Skipper lost his... Thought he, somebody lost his shoe. It wasn't Kelly. Good sure tackle that time by Kinder, but uh, Skipper did what he needed to do, and that was pick up the necessary first, first and 10 yardage for less than three minutes in this game, and ball throw... Ball control is the only thing that really counts. Kelly Skipper did lose his shoe. His socks stayed on. And the bottom line is he got a first down for Fresno State when the Bulldogs needed badly. 2.40 left. First down at the 29. Here comes Kelly Skipper again. Up to the 31. John McGuff on the tackle. But who would have thought that the Bulldogs would stay on the ground trying to hold on to a 17-14 victory over the New Mexico State Aggies. And it's not even their style offensively. They're an, expo an explosive, uh, big play offensive ball club. And uh, here they are in the waning minutes. Uh, ball control, close to the fence, grind it out. Clock is down to two minutes and five seconds now. Kevin Sweeney has thrown over only seven passes in this half. Kelly Skipper again. The little guy from Eugene, Oregon, responds with another gain of a couple of yards. Out of bounds. Escorted out by John McGuff and Mike Williams. He's having trouble with that shoe. <laughs> he probably wears about a size 10. Maybe the shoe is a size 12. Might help if he ties it. He just kind of slips it on there and goes right back into the lineup. Who thought that when Barry Belli kicked that 22-yard field goal early in the fourth quarter, that that would be the margin of victory? And it may be, although we still have a minute and 55 seconds left. Taylor is flanked to the left. Kelly Brooks and uh, Kelly Skipper are the running backs. It's Kelly Skipper. Skipper. With a good block from Kelly, Brooks gets the first down up to the 40. Darrell Ford and Ed Russell. It's as if the commander of the ship says to the little guy, the load is on your shoulders. Give us your best effort. And so far, Kelly Skipper has. And nothing that Mike Knoll can do about it as the Bulldogs have picked up another first down, the clock running, 140 left. And the left side of the Aggie defensive line must feel kind of picked on. About the last six running plays have all gone in that direction. Here comes Kelly Skipper again. And so far in the last few minutes, it's been Kelly Skipper in a cloud of dust. Yep. Pitch and run to the right. Steve Markey on the tackle. And when you have that pitch, sometimes bobbles can occur and fumbles, but so far, nothing has. 1.21 left. The dogs by three. has premium on leather. New Super 76. Spirit. A Super 76. It's a brand new spirit. Hi, Octana. 
Gone higher. Spirit of 76. So the spirit, the spirit of 76. Come and get it. Monday. Why don't you get in the game with us? Oh, thanks a lot. I know when I'm not wanted. Now, oh, come on, Frank. We really want you. Me? Yeah, yeah come, come on, Frank. And at 1130. You fix this can? Taxi. It's all fixed? Let me take a look here. <laughs> I don't need that. Mash at 11, taxi at 11.30, Monday on TV 26. And right after the game, the Central Valley Toyota dealers will present tonight's inspirational award to the player whose outstanding performance will earn him this special honor. Be tough to pick an inspirational player, the number one player of this game. Maybe Barry Belli for kicking the field goal. That's the margin of victory right now for the Bulldogs. Kelly Skipper trying to shed a tackle, but they pull him down at the 36. Ed Russell had him. And a timeout call. That'll stop the clock with 115. Timeout call by New Mexico State. 17-14, the Bulldogs. 115 to go. Today's game is brought to you in part by Pepsi-Cola San Joaquin Bottling Company. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. An institution with the dimension and stability of SUMA Health Plan is built on one foundation, understanding the needs of those we serve. SUMA Health Plan is a Valley original, born in the Valley to provide the best health care possible with no financial worry. 13 Valley Hospitals, more than 400 Valley Doctors. SUMA Health Plan protects individuals and businesses in Fresno, Madera, and Kings Counties. SUMA, all the care you'll ever need. You are about to experience a new wave of taste that will stretch your imagination. A taste so refreshing, so irresistible, your only choice will be to catch it. Catch the wave. Coke. See the incredible Coke KBOS video van tomorrow from noon to 2 p.m. at Vons and Marks and Shaw. Get a free Red Wave hand and save on all your favorite Coke products. Catch the wave. Coke. This hasn't been one of those 100-yard-plus nights for either James Williams or Kelly Skipper, but the two have combined for some yardage here, a total of 135, and that is a key element here in the closing minutes. Kelly Skipper, he's got a first down, almost had a touchdown. Pulled down by Todd Parker. With the game on the line, the little guy has responded to the challenge. Kept his shoe on at all, 19 for 78. Good job of explosion there at a crucial time when it really counts for the Bulldogs. They need to maintain possession of the football. And I don't know if you could pick it up, but there was a good block thrown by 5'9", 172-pound split-in Stephen Baker. So the little guys are taking over for Fresno State. 5'9", Baker. 5'6", Kelly Skipper. Here he is again. It's Skipper left, and it's Skipper right. And the... Bulldogs are just 38 seconds away from a win as a timeout has been called by New Mexico State. That's about all New Mexico State can do right now. That's their last timeout. The Bulldogs have three remaining. So we are only 39 seconds away from a 17-14 extremely hard-fought win by the Bulldogs on the basis of a 22-yard field goal by Barry Belli. But remember last week, only seconds left. And what looked like a victory over the Spartans turned into a victory for San Jose State 45-41. I think we even started talking up here in the booth as though the game was already decided, only to have to eat our words a little bit later. We're looking at head coach Mike Knoll there, 34 years old, in his first year at the helm of New Mexico State. Even if the Aggies go on to lose this and they have only 39 seconds left and the Bulldogs have the ball, it would take a Fresno State turnover now to give them another shot. Even if they should lose, 
I'm sure Mike Noel can take heart in the fact that it was a great all-out effort in a in a week of reshuffling yeah, and re-evaluation at New Mexico State. He did everything different for this game. Brought a whole different kinds of players, started new players. Look at Williams. He doesn't look happy over in the sidelines with the ice wrapped around his knee, and there he goes off in the cart. Mm. And this is already a beat-up Fresno State team. Injuries may claim another victim or two. The clock is running now. Nothing New Mexico State can do about it. They're out of timeouts. 17-14. Once the ball is spotted down, you've got 25 seconds to put it in play or else you're going to be penalized for delay of the game and they can just run it out. So... 22-yard field goal by Barry Belli, the winning margin, a great effort by the Aggies of New Mexico State, and all they have to show for it is their fifth straight defeat. Look at Jim Sweeney congratulating the Aggies and the New Mexico State coaching staff on an effort, and it was an excellent effort by the Aggies, Mike Knoll and Jim Sweeney. Final is the Bulldogs, 17, the Aggies of New Mexico State, 14.